Kirk and welcome to the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. And we are at round one at the greatest track on the planet, Phillip Island, with the country's fastest races. And with me is former World Endurance Champ and ASBK Champ, Steve Martin. Steve, the energy is electric. We're kicking things off and what a track to do it at. Yeah, I know. It's only early in the morning here, but already there's a, one of the biggest crowds I've seen here at the circuit. Perfect weather conditions here today. It was a little bit windy today. That may happen again here, but Phillip Island is just such... A brilliant place to be. I mean, there's a real good atmosphere. You can stay on the island, um, you know, have a pizza at night, come in here and watch the racing in the day. But the track, it just flows beautifully. Uh, but the thing I like about it most is that the racing is so close. Yeah, exactly. And I'll tell you what, this track can throw anything at you, including geese. But we've got a couple of storylines to get on top of, first of all. Uh, we've got three Alpine Star Superbike champs that are uh, up for their fourth title. So Wayne Maxwell, Josh Waters and Glenn Allerton. Does that, what does that say about the level of experience and just the depth of this field racing this weekend? What it means is that the young guys, guys that are coming through here have got a really tough path and it's going to make those guys really good riders because the experience in the paddock here is um, pretty much second to none uh, anywhere else in the world. You know, I mean, like Wayne Maxwell went less than half a second off the uh, outright superbike world superbike lap record on his Australian bike the other day. So these guys, those three guys in particular, are all riding at top, you know, world level pace. And that's what the, I like the most about this championship in the last few years. If you win here, you're actually good enough to win anywhere in the world. It's, a, it's an amazing thing to have those three guys. Who's going to get that fourth championship? I don't know. It's too early to say. Well, speaking of that, who can catch Wayne Maxwell? He's basically a second and a half in front of the field. He's going for his fourth title. Uh, that would be three in a row. Uh, it's just, it's going to be really tough to catch him everything. He's just so dialed in. The team is working together. Uh, what are they going to do? Well, you know, Maxwell is a machine. He really is. I mean, everywhere you go, uh, his name's popping up now as well. I was at the service station the other day. A guy had a flat tire. I helped him. He said, oh, Max, Maxi. And I, I thought, who are you talking to? Oh, Maxwell. You know, so his name's out there. He's got great uh, presence. He's not scared to put the others in their place. So he's piling the pressure on. The others have to dig deep. Like you say, they're, they're off of his pace a little bit. But, you know, there's some that are coming. Josh Waters, keep an eye on him. He's up there now, qualified on the front row here. He's a guy that's gaining in confidence over the last um, two or three months, especially since he joined the new team. Exactly. And that's another storyline to follow is all the movers and shakers in the paddock. There's a lot of new teams happening. You know, there's 720 Moto. There's uh, some super sport kids stepping up to, to the big game. Uh, we've got Brian Starring now at Desmo Sport Ducati. Oli Bayless has gone overseas. There's a lot of movement. So... What can we expect from this from this season of riders? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you said it there. I mean, whenever anybody changes positions in a team, they, um, you know, they improve a lot. Yeah, exactly. All right, we're going to send you right up to Phil Harlem, the expert commentator in the box, to get on top of this race. Thanks very much, Kate. Looks like we've got a problem on the grid there. Looks like uh, that could be uh, Hudson Thompson, is it, uh, that's fallen over. Looks like bike number seven that uh, could have just fallen over on the grid. I'm sure the officials will get that uh, upright straight away so we can get this first of the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup races underway. So here we go. We'll get a replay of this. It's pulled up on the, uh, on the grid. That actually would be, uh, no, that would be uh, Sam Drain, bike number seven, just pulled up there went to put his foot down. I think he got his foot caught on the foot peg and uh, that's what meant that he just dropped the bike there on the grid. All good to go now. You can see him there. Hopefully he's as calm as the white shark helmet that he's wearing there on the grid. You can see there he's got to stand with one leg uh, down so that he can just get the, uh, the bike balanced. In the starter's hands, ready to go. First Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup of the weekend is go and they make their way down towards turn one. Looks like a pretty good start from the outside of the front row of the grids from Brody Page on board bike number 74. They make their way down in towards turn one for the first time. Of course, a very new and different looking uh, Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup in 2022, but we have a lot of riders just like every other year of the championship. And it's so great to see all of the riders going overseas, the previous champions, and doing such great work. So we make our way into turn one for the first time. It is bike number 74 of Brody Page that takes the lead. Slotting into second place, I think that might have even been 34 of Tieran Fleming. 
as they make their way out of turn two down towards the very fast Stoner Corner turn three this weekend Stoner Corner is of course known as Yamaha Financial Services Corner as they make their way past signage and down in towards turn four for the first time big moves on the brakes up the inside is that bike number 78 no round the outside sweeping through there that might have been Tieran Fleming on board bike number 34 out towards Siberia we head now on this first race of six laps a little bit of a break being made there at the uh, the front of this field lots of jostling back in the pack Hunter Corney has made his way up to the lead now. One rider going out very wide there on the exit of the Siberia corner. Ducati corner this weekend as they make their way up towards the hay shed. It is still Hunter Corney that leads from Levi Russo. Ryan Larkin on bike number 68 is in third place. And William Hunt on 46 is uh, sitting there in fourth place now. Early, early leader Brody Page has dropped back to a uh, fifth position. That's what we've found in this class. If you blink, you'll go a long way back in the field very, very quickly. Down in towards turn 10 we come now for the first time. Field looking like it's all making its way through there very safely. But to at the front, Hunter Corney is making a break. Look at this lead that he's managed to uh, open up. Most of the OJC races that we've seen here at Phillip Island over the past couple of years have all been extremely close. There was one uh, round a couple of years ago where... Uh, the rider that won all three races, I think it was Lucas Quinn, actually won by a combined margin of half a second across three races. We go across the start finish line now to complete this first of six laps. It is Hunter Corney that leads from Ryan Larkin, Brody Page, Levi Russo and Cameron Rendy. Victor in yesterday's race, who's sitting now in fifth position on board bike number 80. Not a bad start for the young South Australian, having his second ever outing this weekend in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup. Of course, the grandson of uh, Mal Pittman, a man that's probably forgotten more about uh, motorcycle racing than most people will ever know, and a pretty good man to have in your corner in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup. So Hunter Corney makes his way out of uh, turn two now and down towards turn three for the second time. William Hunt's moved up into second place on board bike number 46, and Rendy has now moved up into third place on board bike number 80. Can he repeat his win from yesterday? Just having a look at yesterday's lap times, they're not too far uh, off the pace so far in uh, morning warm-up this morning, but yesterday afternoon was very, very windy, and these light riders on light motorcycles would have been very, very badly affected as they tried to make their way around the uh, undulating tarmac here at Phillip Island. So bike number 74, Brody Page, looking like he's made his way up into a third place now. As they make their way up towards the uh, hay shed. Steve Martin joins us back in uh, commentary, Steve. You'd be pretty happy to see your young South Australian mate Cameron Rendy doing pretty well. He won yesterday's race, and he's on the charge in this one as well. Yeah, he certainly is. I mean, he's uh, making a little bit of a name for himself. Um, I walked past the garage there yesterday, and um, uh, they were having a bit of a joke how, they, uh, how Cameron bypasses Dad and goes straight to Granddad to get the information on riding the bike. As you said, Mal Pittman, a man who's um, been around all sorts of motorsport um, and run factory teams and been in the GP paddock. And, uh, yeah, he's a, definitely a lucky man at the moment uh, to be able to uh, draw on that. But um, out front and by a fair margin is uh, Hunter Corney. Um, and what a great uh, job he's doing there at the moment. He's actually pulled out quite a decent lead. There's a bit of a headwind though, so it's going to be interesting to see if these uh, gaggle of bikes behind Brody Page, um, Tyrion Fleming, Larkin and Cameron Rendy, Sam's are anything there for the, the second year as well. Can um, Slipstream and catch him up or has he got enough of the lead there? It's going to be interesting to see as they head in and they've caught him. Yeah, it didn't take too long on the other uh, straight there. They used the Slipstream of each other to pull their way forward. And, of course, the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup, uh, proudly supported by Blue Crew and uh, Yamaha as well. And uh, great to see the field has closed back up. And this is what we expect from this uh, Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup field. It's not often that we see someone get that far ahead as what we saw uh, Hunter Corney in those first couple of laps. He's dropped back into the field now in third place. So we've got Brody Page up into uh, the lead. Marcus Hamod is in uh, second place. And it's, I think, his second year in the uh, championship as well. Great to see so many riders returning for a second year. And also great to see the younger brothers of previous riders in this championship coming through now. Of course, uh, of course Hunter Thompson, uh, Hudson Thompson uh, comes to mind, along with uh, Sam Drain, 
whose uh, older brother Tom was uh, a star in this championship a few years ago. Yeah, no, it's really good to see those young guys coming through. But look at the gaggle of bikes at the front now. It's just in incredible to see. Unfortunately, we've had a crash. A rider, 37, Alexander Cody, uh, went down at turn two. So that's the end of the race for him. But uh, back at the front, uh, once again, it's uh, is that Brody Page out front who's uh, made a little bit of a gap, but they get it back in the slipstream. The thing with this race, Phil, is that these guys need to think three laps out where they want to position themselves if they want to try and win this. Because if you leave coming into that final, out of the final band, you're probably not going to win the race. So now it's, it's happened plenty of times here before in this class, hasn't it? And uh, remember a couple of years ago, it was Lucas Quinn that won all three races by a combined margin of half a second across the three races. And uh, he's now stepped up into the Supersport 300 class, which is great to see. But uh, look at this battle now between Page and Corny as they make their way around through turn 12. You see Corny will be able to sit into the slipstream here of the Brody Page as they make their way out onto the Garden Straight. The person's going to get the best advantage, though, would be Ryan Larkin on board bike number 68 and Sam Drain on board bike number 7. Marcus Hammond, look at him shoot through. And he's just learned that uh, that is a really good spot to be on the last laps. He was like third or fourth in that group, and that really slingshotted him into the lead at the line. But obviously, by the end of the straight, looks like it's um, either looks like it could have been Brody Page that went back through. Looks like the Blue Crew Precision Riding Team as they make their way through turn one on this occasion. There was uh, riders taking up pretty much the entire track distance or width there as they made their way through that corner. Back into turn two, it's a little bit more single file. A couple of riders sitting out a fraction wider. As they, oh, oh, there's one going off the track there. Is that bike number 71? That's James Weaver. Yep. And he's doing a bit of weaving as we speak. Look at him. He's oh. managed to hold it. Oh, look how small he is on that I bike. I he might have a bit of uh, dirt or flat track experience there, the way he was able to keep that bike up right through that uh, gravel trap. Well, let's remember that Gary McCoy is the rider coach uh, in this group. And if anybody knows how to slide and weave a bike around, it is Gary McCoy. So here we go. Here's an AMX Superstores replay, and we can see that rider there, bike number 74, making his way off the track. Have, oh, 71. Have a go at how well he does to keep the bike upright. You can see the gravel trap grabbing the wheels there, kept the throttle on, managed to get all the way through. Congratulations, James Weaver. That is an absolute top effort. We've got a red flag, though, Steve. Yeah. Red flag. I'm not sure what's happened, but it uh, looks like someone has crashed on the circuit. We are only... Uh, a couple of laps into this six lap journey so we'll wait to see what the officials uh, do in relation to a red uh, a restart of this race but our race leader at the time when the red flag came out was harrison watts on board bike number 14 and marcus hamon as you said had made his way up into uh, uh, second place nothing major to worry about there's geese on the track so unfortunately um philip island being situated where where it is is um you know, sometimes we do get the wildlife that uh, we had a kangaroo on Friday, Phil. Today it's uh, geese that are, you know, not buying the ticket and coming in the normal ways. They're flying and landing in the middle of the track and sometimes next to the track. So you can see there. Um, now, those geese, they are quite big and you do not want to hit one. Quite big is an understatement. And the well, other thing is they do, they never by themselves because they always hang around in pairs. So there's always going to be at least two of them uh, next to the track. So, uh, yep, the officials will be able to uh, remove those unpaid spectators uh, very, very quickly, Steve, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, get going again with the, uh, the, well, the second start of this uh, second race for the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup. A few changes for the uh, Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup as well this, uh, this season. They've got different tyres as well, Steve. They've got uh, Dunlop tyres this year, which is a, a bit of a change from the, uh, the last couple of years. Yep. New paint schemes as well, uh, really good to see. I mean, the bikes are looking super professional uh, this year on track. Uh, how many years has this class been going now, Phil? This will be the uh, third fourth year. Yeah, fourth year. Uh, it's really been stepping up, and I mean, without the support of Yamaha, um, and all the supporters of that uh, class, I mean, you know, they've really made a pathway for these young guys to um, get out there and get into road racing. Um, it's probably the cheapest way in the world to go road racing. And when you have a look at it too, the, uh, the lap times that they're doing are pretty much exactly the same as what has been done over the last couple of years as well. So the, uh, the talent level is staying at a consistently high level over the, uh, the last couple of years, which is great to see. As you mentioned too, the, uh, the new coach this year in, uh, in Gary McCoy, there was some people uh, saying that uh, all of the, uh, the riders will be going sideways everywhere because Gary McCoy was famous for that. But he said uh, he's already noticed a couple of them starting to get a little bit uh, sideways into corners. Well, I was um, just up near the uh, 
the um, Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup pits yesterday and uh, Gary grabbed them all, be, uh, put them all on the back of the truck and he has a chat to them after every you know, meeting. He watches everyone's move. He'll be having a word to James Weaver, that's for sure, to try and figure out what happened. Uh, but he's definitely the right guy for the job. Um, I mean, he really does love putting back into the sport. It's not like he's just been up in Queensland sitting on his farm. He's, uh, you know, he does rider coaching up there as well. So really good guy for these young you know, guys to learn. Probably a lot of them don't even know who he is. But well, uh, Some of them actually might even be taller than him. Maybe, maybe. Just but, uh, an interesting stat too about the, uh, the Blue, Su Blue Crew Oceano Junior Cup. There have been six races here at Phillip Island uh, in this class. And at the end of the race, from the leader to fifth place was under three tenths of a second every time in every single race. And uh, in half of the races, the margin at the end of the race from the leader to tenth place was under half a second. Yeah, well, I think that uh, we're gonna, those stats are going to continue because when you look at how close that was, it was like basically the, the top 15 guys all within a second um, uh, in that first part of the race. So cannot wait uh, to get this back underway. It'd be interesting to see what they do, how many laps they'll run it for. Um, it was a six-lap race. Uh, obviously, they've done a couple of laps, so maybe cut it down to three laps, I'd say. Probably don't want to do it less than that. The medical car, race safe medical car, pulling up to the back of the field now, indicating that things are nearly ready to get underway. Those geese have been moved on. They're probably going to head off on a warm up lap now just to get those um, Dunlop slicks back up to temperature. And then they'll head off for what we've just been informed will be a three lap dash. Dash and dash. Well, if we thought this bus was pretty exciting, it's going to be a whole lot more exciting once we get a three lap dash going underway. But uh, yeah, just to mention those new sponsors for the, uh, the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup this year. Uh, continuing on is Ricondi with their, uh, their leathers. Levi Russo, Tieran Fleming and Brody Page on that front row of the grid will all be wearing those uh, Ricondi leathers. On the second row of the grid we have Sam Drain who dropped his bike in the uh, initial start but was able to get it back up again. Ryan Larkin and Harrison Watts. Hudson Thompson. Hunter Corney, who had a good result, and Cameron Rende also were featuring in that last part of the race. James Weaver, William Hunt, and Marcus Hammond rounds out 12. Row 5, we've got Alexander Corey on 37, John Pelgrave on 43, and Valentino Nezovic, who uh, looked like he ran off track there in that race. He's probably thankful that the red flag came out on 48 on row 5. Row 6 will be Abby Cameron. Great to see Abby on bike number 88 in the championship. Toby James on 27, and Nixon Frost, the son of Sloan Frost, all the way from New Zealand. Yeah, really good to see him out there on the, the grid as well. Alexander Cody, Marcus Hammond, Ryan Larkin, Brody Page, Sam Drain, and uh, Levi Russo on... Uh, row nine. So the rest of those sponsors to Steve for the uh, the Blue Crew Oceania Cup this year. DID chains, all of the bikes will be fitted with DID chains. They'll all be fitted with Dunlop slicks as well, all using Yamalube lubricants and of course every one of them has a speed angle uh, lap timer which also tells them uh, lean angles and a lot of other useful information which I'm sure can be used for bragging rights at the end of the weekend. Yeah, I mean they're a real special piece of equipment those things so uh, really good to see. Of course, they're on this warm-up lap now, just getting those uh, slicks uh, back up to temperature. Also, a special mention to uh, Web Plastics, who are providing the screens for the bikes uh, in this uh, 2022 season and also providing all the trophies for each round as well. No, it's good to see uh, Web Plastics involved as well. I mean, it, it takes a massive commitment from everybody to dig deep to make this happen, and, um, you know, the class is... Uh, resulted it's here just because of all those people that helped. Right riders making their way back around onto the grid. Take up their positions. You can see there Brody Page has been a consistent front runner in the championship now. He's uh, second year in the championship on board bike number 74. Doing a really good job. It's just great to see when uh, young riders come in, especially uh, immediately springing to mind Cameron Randy had one ride in this championship at the end of last year Steve at the final round of the championship yeah and here he is at his second round taking a race win in his first race confidence has got to be a massive thing heading into this race today for Cameron Randy on board bike number 80 it is it is confidence for sure but it's also you, to win the race it's not about riding your guts out and, and trying to get to the line first you've actually got to really think about where to place yourself out on track uh, with a couple of laps to go otherwise you're just going to get eaten up if you lead onto that straight first for the last lap especially in this class so many, so many guys are just going to go past you you could lead onto the straight 
towards that finish line and end up 10th. So it's all about, a th I mean, these young kids, some of them as young as 10, a thinking game. All right, looks like we're just about ready to go racing. Just a slight hold up there with the officials, just uh, making sure that uh, the riders are in the correct grid positions. Getting a maths lesson as well while they're here at Phillip Island. The, uh, the young fellas in the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup, of course, for uh, riders up to 15 years of age. Officials now leaving the grid. Green flag at the back, red flag at the front. Looks like we're ready to go racing. Good point to the lights. Blue Crew Oceania Cup, uh, race number two for the weekend. Set to go. Good launch off the line there from the outside of the grid once again. But the man's even pole position, Marcus Hammond, a massive wheel stand. And his drive has now been compromised as they head down towards turn one for the first time. You don't see an R15 monoing off the line very often, do you? That was good to see. Down into turn one for the first time, it is Brody Page, who I saw get a good start from uh, position number three on the outside of the front row of the grid, make his way into turn one in the lead. Up towards turn two we go now. Looks like Hamod has uh, got in behind him there. And also uh, Cameron Redney, well positioned on board bike number 80 as they make their way through turn two for the first time. Sam Drain's there in fourth position too. Good to see him get a good start uh, right up there. And uh, Hunter Corney, who led some of the laps earlier on, has made his way uh, right up to where he needs to be as well. William Hunt is up there in fourth position now. These places are just swapping backwards and forwards all the time, Phil. Yep, back coming down now past the Honda signs into turn four. Look at them all spread out trying to get the good position on the track. Massive overtaking manoeuvre there up the inside. That rider on the inside of the apex of turn four right now was, uh, went past about two or three riders. Just having a look, I think that may have been Hunter Corney on board bike number 40 that pulled off that outrageous manoeuvre. The good thing is he's managed to make his way uh, past a couple of riders and heading out towards Siberia we go. It's uh, out of Ducati the corner they come. Just having an AMX replay of the start. Look at the wheelie there. It was an incredible uh, <laughs> launch from Hammond. I just think he just dropped the clutch and, um, you know, it literally, you know, knocked him back a bit. But he'll get back up towards the front. He's already in second place. Looks like Levo Russo is on a bit of a move as well on board bike number 72. You can just see him as they come up to the top of Lukey Heights there, trying to find his way past a couple of riders. Sam Drain, well positioned uh, in that pack as well on board bike number seven as we make our way out of turn 10, past the Michelin signs at turn 11 and around to turn 12. Will they, only in a short race, Steve, will they now be trying to practice and see what the slipstream will do and where it can get them and trying to think about that next thing? Because you said before, you've got to calculate three laps from the end. Well, this is only an hour three lap race. Absolutely. You do not want to be leading uh, now. You know what I mean? Like, you want to be starting to think about it. Um, where you want to be, like the guy leading now, he should be calculating. I've got to actually fall back a bit now, and he is because he's getting overtaken there. But that's he needs to be in about fifth or sixth position on the last lap, or he needs to be way clear. And I just can't see anybody being way clear. Harrison Watts up the inside now, he's come from ninth position as an example over the length of that straight. Yeah, well you can see too, Cameron Randy was sitting in about fourth position, went past the three riders in front to the lead, and then all he did was gave the opportunity for other riders to slipstream him as they got towards the bottom of the straight. They won't have to worry about that on the last lap, but it's very important as they start this uh, second last lap of this race as they make their way down through the bottom end of the circuit now to try to start setting up their position they want to come on to the start finish straight in. Yeah, in these, uh, I mean, I've been lucky enough to ride one of these bikes around this track. Um, way back when the class was first introduced as well as they head into Honda Corner uh, 15 wide there incredible stuff um, and, and there's not a lot of throttle input you're pretty much flat out all the time oh one of the guys is wide there couldn't quite see who that was and get a look at his race number yeah, luckily he was able to run out onto the uh, the green painted uh, asphalt on the outside of the ripple strip so uh, got back onto the track pretty swiftly too Got to mention Abby Cameron as well, doing a great job out there in the uh, point scoring positions um, from Western Australia, doing a really good job out there, um, hanging in that group. I think they even didn't they relocate over to the Eastern States to make it Three easier months. to uh, to compete in this championship this year. So big commitment from uh, Abby Cameron and her family to uh, get over here. So uh, great to see a girl back out there in the championship. We have had a couple of girls competing in the past, but uh, it's always good to see more in this field. Ryan Larkin in second, Page leads at the moment on the number 74. Round Just through turn 12 we come, Steve. This is going to be very important now. Who can get the run onto the Gardner straight? And as we head down in towards turn one, get themselves into the right position to 
follow this field around for the last lap. Last lap board will be out as we come out onto the Gardner straight now. Look at them all spread out wide across the straight. Yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's have a look. It's uh, Page who leads across the line, more or less. He led, he led out of that last corner. Let's see where he ends up by the end of the straight. Uh, and that's going to be a... Those two riders yeah. that uh, came out to the inside look like they may have timed their run down the straight pretty well. But I think is that uh, bike number 74, Brody Page, once again, is still in this mix. He's been near the front pretty much every time that we've looked at the field. And as we come down in towards turn one, is it bike number 48 now that uh, is up into the lead? Yeah, it looks like it. That's uh, uh, Nezovic, who's made his way up into the lead. And uh, he's uh, he was in the championship last year. Good little guy. He's actually grown about two feet since last year. So a lot, lot of experience, a lot more strength and a lot more experience. William Hunt on 46 has now made his way to the front as we make our way down towards Honda Corner, turn four this weekend. Look at the swarm of bees coming in there. They've only dropped uh, one or two riders off the pack. We've pretty much got the entire field grouped together as we make our way on the exit of Turn 4 and head out towards the uh, real bottom end of the circuit here at... Uh, Ducati Corner. Ducati Corner this weekend. Start the long run up the hill now, out of Dunlop and up towards the uh, the very oh, fast place in corner. Someone's wide again, didn't quite get to see who that was, but probably maybe James Weaver again because he was down in that position around there. You can see by the head actually he was pretty filthy with himself for getting it wrong on the exit of the corner. Up to the top of Luby Heights we come now, bike number 34, Tieran Fleming that's come to the lead. Keep your eye on this fella. He did some really good performances last year and... Uh, who is looking to uh, try and take the championship in 2022. Down in towards turn 10 we come. He's leading now, but he's got a massive group of riders that are going to utilise his slipstream. The only hope for Tieran Fleming coming round in that lead is that he's got enough of a gap as he comes through turn 12 that they can't actually catch him as he gets to the start-finish line. He doesn't have to be leading at turn 1. He's only got to be leading at the start-finish line on this lap. And he's got a pretty good gap as they come round turn 12 for the final time, Steve. Yeah, he's got a real good gap. It's going to be close. He may have just pulled this off, but... Uh, the slipstream effect is coming. He's still got a little bit to go. Here we come to the line now. Coming fast is up bike number 13 as we go. He goes past bike number 13 will take the win. That is uh, Marcus Hammond has taken the win. Congratulations to him. He had a DNF in yesterday's race but comes back and takes the victory in today's race. I think it was Sam Drain that also used the slipstream of affection to take second position and Tieran Fleming who uh, led them by a considerable margin coming onto the straight will take third place. Cameron Rendy, yesterday's race victor, will take fourth and Ryan Larkin will round out your top five. Yeah, that was a good race, wasn't it? Uh, really good to see. Lots of different leaders. Um, nice, clean racing, though. There was no dirty racing in there, which is really good to see. Uh, and Marcus Hammond, what a ride by him. He just timed that perfectly. Got over the line and, um, you know, good job by him. Well, congratulations to Marcus Hammond, who took the race win from Sam Drain and Tieran Fleming. They will be on the podium very shortly. Cameron Rendy in fourth place, Ryan Larkin in fifth, Hudson Thompson in sixth place, Harrison Watts in seventh, Brody Page in eighth, and Levi Russo rounds out the top ten. William Hunt, Valentino Nezovic, James Weaver, John Pelgrave, Hunter Corney, and the last point for Abby Cameron, Toby James in 16th, 17th was Lachlan Moody, and 18th was Elysia Andrew. All right, let's have a look at the Honda race highlights now for the first of our Blue Crew Oceania Cup Junior races for today. There was a bit of a wheelie off the line as uh, they made their way down towards turn one for the first time. We can see Brody Page was uh, our early race leader on board bike number 74, but a massive group of riders all the way behind. And as usual, Steve, positions changed pretty much every corner. Oh, they certainly did. They certainly did. They were all up there. Uh, Nezovic led for a while. Uh, Bodhi Page led for a while. Hudson Thompson was up there too, making his way through. There was lots of action up the inside into Honda Corner. Plenty of overtaking to be had there. A couple of riders running a little bit wide on the exit here, but this effort to uh, try and keep the bike upright by bike number 71, James Weaver, needs to be congratulated. That was an unbelievable uh, skill shown there from him to uh, keep the bike upright. But then, unfortunately, we had a red flag because there were a couple of geese on the circuit. Yep, and then when they finally got rid of the geese, uh, they were off again and uh, straight into that slipstreaming. Three laps, it was a dash for the cash at this point, Phil, although there was no cash to be had. <laughs> That's right. Bike number 74 was our uh, early race leader as well. Once again, uh, 
uh, Brody Page doing a good job, but as you can see, the slipstream on the straight meant that he got swallowed up pretty quickly as this large group of riders made their way through. It was only a three-lap dash, Steve, and uh, positioning started pretty much from the start of the race to try and set up the race win at the end. Yeah, Cameron Rende was trying his best to pull off the win that he had uh, earlier on yesterday. Uh, he was uh, placed well, couldn't quite do it today. Um, Sam Drain was up there as well. So Brody Page led onto the straight for the penultimate lap, but as they made their way down in towards turn one, he was swamped by the rest of the field and had a fair bit of work to do back in the pack. Then we saw, very strangely, a rider start to make a bit of a break from the field in this uh, last Lap, last lap, and that was uh, Marcus Hamod on board bike number 13, who got past Tieran Fleming, who led onto the straight to take the first win of today by 0 0.082 of a second, and he will be heading very, very shortly to the AMX Superstores podium. Yeah, what an incredible race that was. Um, points on the board too, good to see. Uh, he'd be very happy with that. Um, not such a bad uh, ride for Tieran Fleming in third as well. Good to see him up there. Well, and that uh, somewhat makes up for Marcus Hamod's uh, DNF yesterday. Takes uh, a good 25 points for uh, for today's race win, and I think he's pretty happy with that, judging by the body language. Yeah, absolutely. Cameron Rende uh, leads the championship with 42 points at the moment, uh, so he'd be pretty happy with that. A decent lead over Sam Drain with 35. Uh, equal three guys equal Hudson Thompson Tyrion Fleming and Sam Drain all on 35 points that's going to be pretty close this year and I think uh, Phillip Island is a great place to start because the uh, the bikes are so closely matched here there's Robbie Bugden from Dunlop Motorsport in there to uh, check on the progress of his uh, tyres <laughs> there you go that's how excited Marcus Hamlet is he just walks straight over the uh, the barrier to keep the other uh, spectators out and I wonder running bike number 13 if he's an Ant West fan well, could well be, but I'll tell you what, the team need to take it easy on him. He's still got one more race to do. They were hugging him to death there, so uh, great job by him. Time to hear from our top three. They're with KP. Yes, we're down here at the Blue Crew Oceana Junior Cup podium, and in P3 we've got Tieran Fleming. Tieran, you had a great 21 uh, and a really good start to this year. Congratulations on P3. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your race because it would look pretty wild out there. Yeah, it's just a lot of contact and yeah. Well, it was very brave effort for you and congratulations. Great start to the great start to the year. Yep, thank you. Well, we've got to um, head to the expert uh, commentators, Phil Harlem and Steve Martin, for our next race to start, the R3 Cup. Thanks, KP, down there at the AMX Superstores podium, getting ready for uh, R3 Cup. Next race on today's program, Steve. And, uh, well, it's good to see a lot of the riders, when they've uh, graduated from the Blue Crew Oceania Junior Cup, they either make their way overseas to compete in the pathways to MotoGP or they step up to uh, R3 Cup and the uh, Dunlop Supersport 300 class. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, a pathway. Motorcycling Australia have been working hard. Um, all of the bodies have been looking and thinking of ways to improve the, the pathway, make it a cheaper way for people to get into racing and, um, you know, perhaps give them the opportunity to give more people the opportunity to be able to get up there to see what they can do you know in the in the realms of the world of racing that riders heading out on track now for our uh, next event it will be the michelin michelin supersport that race will be coming up uh, very shortly but first a quick break here from philip island and the 2022 my bike motorcycle insurance australian superbike championships presented by motel opening round At My Bike Insurance, we are motorcycle specialists. It's all in the name. We understand how important your motorcycle is to you. And because of this, we strive to provide peace of mind cover for you and your motorcycle, no matter where your bike takes you. Visit the My Bike website for a quick and easy quote or call the My Bike Insurance team on 1300 780 446 today. For us, the journey is not about the destination. The journey starts long before we hit the road. The gear we wear, the way it feels, and the safety it brings. Some say the journey never ends, but it has to start. Start your journey with AMX Superstores. Why? Because we ride too. Enjoy the journey with AMX Superstores.
Hi. Hi. We were thinking of having a cruisy day. Mm, maybe grab a pastry and a coffee. See some street art? Maybe go to a museum. Grab a gelato. And have afternoon tea. Any suggestions? This very moment, the rider is protected, but it only takes 0.03 seconds for the sneaker to burst, 0.6 seconds for the jeans to disintegrate. Then, like a human crown, his flesh is shredded by the coarse bitumen. Continuing action from the first round of the 2022 Championship. Steve Martin, no better place to start our year in 2022 than Phillip Island. It's the traditional and spiritual home of Australian motorcycling. Well, it certainly is, and what a place to be, Phil. I mean, look at that view from the grid. You could race, you could just stare at that view. There's no better place to be than Phillip Island right now, except maybe watching it on the live stream or on the TV. Or down on the grid, so uh, hopefully we'll be heading down there shortly. But we're getting ready for Michelin Supersport, uh, Steve. I'm especially excited this year about the Michelin Supersport Championship. Let's go down to the grid and see if we can hear from some of our, our riders with KP. Hello team, all right, we've got Senna Aji is here now. You are on a very fast Honda, my friend. Uh, well done on pole. This is a great place to start at a really great track. So how are you feeling? Yeah, I'm feeling really good and I'm looking forward to it. And tell me about, uh, you're heading overseas, so we're only going to have you for, for this weekend, aren't we? Yeah, I'm heading overseas to do the European Moto2 Championship, so I'll only be doing the first round and possibly something at the end of the year, but um, I'm ready for today and I'm looking forward to it. Great, well, we're looking forward to seeing how you go, my friend. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, we'll head over to Tommy Edwards. Tommy Edwards of the Bike Fizz Bike. Ah, uh, you had a bit of a roller coaster day yesterday. The red flag came out and, uh, and you had a bit of an off. How are you feeling? Yeah, you know, yesterday in qualifying we struggled a little bit and I had a, had a big off. I was on a quick lap um, where I think I could have gone to pole, but um, feeling okay today. Still a little bit stiff, but I think we should be fine through the races. Yeah, you better watch out. There's been some geese flying around, so uh, so just, just make sure you steer clear of them. Yeah, for sure. That's Philip Island for you. <laughs> Excellent stuff, Tommy. Well, good luck out there and uh, we hope to see you at the finish line in first. Thank you. Cheers team, we've got Tom Bramich here. Tom, how are you feeling? We're going in, we're going for race one, it's going to be pretty exciting. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, we're in a good spot, we're on the front row and uh, yeah, let's see what happens. Hopefully I get a good start and yeah, see how it plays out. Yeah, and how is the weather playing out is it today? It's a little bit less windy than yesterday. Track temperatures are a little bit different. Yeah, I think the heat's going to help us and uh, yeah, the, the wind's the same for everyone. So uh, yeah, it's going to be good in places and hold us back in others. So. Cool stuff. All right, Tom, will you enjoy that? Safe racing. We'll see you at the end. Cheers, guys. Thanks, KP. Yeah, great to hear from the uh, the front row of the grid there. Uh, and I think the, the, the best thing about uh, that front row of the grid, Steve, is that uh, we've got a young guy that's going off to represent Australia in the, uh, the Junior uh, World uh, Championship for the Moto2 machines. And we've also got two young guys that have won championships uh, here in Australia that are stepping up now to Supersport that are probably going to go head-to-head, -head, but there's a whole lot of other players in there as well. Have a look at that second row of the grid with Ollie Simpson, Ty Lynch and Jack Passfield. Pretty handy super sport field this year. Well, it certainly is. I mean, the other thing to remember about that front row is that they've, yep. they've all raced overseas at a time in their career, so they've, yep. they've got international experience uh, in the 600 class. It gives the other guys like uh, Ollie Simpson, who's another guy who's raced overseas in the Red Bull Rookies Club, but um, it gives guys like Ty Lynch, Jack Passfield, Dallas Skier, Scotty Nicholson, who's back in the championship, 
an opportunity to get into it. Back down to KP on the grid. I've got Dallas Gear here in P7. Uh, Dallas, it's been, a, it's been a pretty wild weekend, but you're finding some speed throughout. You found some speed through testing and through practice, so I know you're feeling pretty good going into this race. Yeah, we're, uh, you know, another half a second in the lap times will really get us in the hunt for the podium. So um, if we can get up there, that'd be great. We know we've got the pace. We're in the mix. Um, just put our head down, get a good start and go for it. Yeah, who do you see as your biggest competitor on this grid? Oh, uh, it would definitely have to be like the front two boys, Tommy Edwards, Tom Bramich. Um, you know, they're flying. Um, Senna's not doing the whole round, so it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, definitely everyone in front of me is my competitor. Yeah, eyes on the prize, my friend. Where well, you're about to take off, we're leaving the grid, so good luck. Can't wait to see you at the finish line. No worries, thanks. Yeah, and uh, I think the best thing about Dallas Skier is that he's changed motorcycles, but he's got such a good crew behind him, of course, led by Glenn Richards, a man who needs no introduction to probably most Australians and also probably most of the people that uh, could be watching from the UK as well. No, absolutely. I mean, he's, um, you know, he's in a good spot in that team. He's uh, going to improve also, you know, moving from Suzuki to Yamaha. The Yamaha is a more up-to-date package for this field, so... I believe that we're going to see more from Dallas Skier to come this year than what we've seen in the past. I mean, he's always been a hard charger. Uh, you know, does a lot of laps around Mount Gambier, and he's been following the series for a little while. But uh, he's going to be up against it this weekend because Tommy Edwards, Senagis, Tom Bramich, all mean business. Ollie Simpson, you've got to get past him first, too, to lead the way. Ty Lynch is back. Remember that. He had a big crash back here. So interesting to see what he can do on the bike. But he's looking pretty good. Lap now as the field makes their way. 20 riders uh, into the four Michelin Supersport this weekend. A healthy Supersport field, Steve. And uh, as we mentioned, a lot of young guns stepping up from the uh, R3 Cup and Supersport 300 into Supersport over the last couple of years has certainly bolstered those ranks. A little technical uh, innovation this year as well. The guys are allowed to use slick tyres this year if they want to as well. So they can use DOT tyres or slick tyres uh, as long as it's in their allocation. So um, looks like we're heading towards slicks in the future full time. But for now they can have a combination of both. So it's going to be interesting to see how that affects the times. Let's have a look at our grid. Uh, leading the way, Senna Agius, the only Honda in the field. will start from pole position with uh, Yamaha mounted Toms of Tom Edwards and Tom Bramage right behind him joining him on that front row of the grid. Third, uh, second row of the grid will be Ollie Simpson, Ty Lynch and Jack Passfield. Dallas Skier starts row three with Scotty Nicholson back in the field uh, on, uh, in eighth position. Jack Hyde in ninth. Johnny Littress on the number 308 in tenth. Eleventh is Tim, Tim Large and Tom Drain in twelfth. Row five is led up by Mitch Kuhn, John Quinn and Reese Belling on board bike number 61. And row six will be Tarbin Walker, Noel Mann and Brendan Wilson, who's done plenty of laps around here, most of them on, uh, on classic bikes though, so he'll be no stranger to the Phillip Island circuit. Absolutely. Be good to see him out there. Look at that crowd here, Phil, today. It's really building at the moment. It's still fairly early in the morning, um, but uh, they're going to be in for a show because there's going to be some sensational races. I think today. a lot of people, Steve, are used to coming to Phillip Island at the end of February to watch World Superbikes and the Australian Superbikes being the support category, but this time they've thought, no, I'm coming here to watch uh, ASBK this weekend. We ran into a lot of people on my way down here as I rode here over two days from, from Sydney that were doing this exact same thing. So uh, great to see people coming from all over Australia to take in this first round of this championship which we've all been waiting two years for a full championship year hopefully we get it underway this year Steve. Perfect track temp out there 22.2 degrees it's partly cloudy 21 degrees ambient temperature it's going to be a fantastic uh, fantastic conditions out there uh, to see some good time it's going to be really interesting to see I think this is going to be a close one but they're going to have to stay try and go with uh, Senna from the start they can't afford to let him go so Tommy Edwards and Tommy Bremich are going to have to dig deep uh, it's all can it's uh, and see if they can stay with Senna in the first um, couple of laps. Well but he's a 10 lap journey for Michelin and Super Sport race number one, just about ready to go. Right as I lined up on the grid, we're in the starter's hands. Michelin Super Sport is go. Great start there from Santa Agnes on board bike number 81. You can see he was just away, cleared out, and they make their way down towards turn one for the first time. But he's been swamped. He's actually run off the inside of the circuit, and the uh, the two Toms have taken their lead. And they're now into turn one. And right behind them, I think it may have been Ollie Simpson on uh, bike number uh, 45 that made his way up into that leading group as well. Not sure what happened to Senna Edges there, but it looked like he got out very wide to the left-hand side of the circuit and dropped right back in the field. Yeah, he certainly has. Um, <clears throat> a lot of work to do for Senna Edges. He's uh, way back down in 
ninth position at the moment. So work to do for him, but it's worked out perfectly for the two Toms out front. And it's Tommy Bramich in second, and uh, Tommy Edwards leads the way. Remember, he had that big crash yesterday in qualifying, so he'll be looking to just try and keep things cool for the first couple of laps. I tell you what, it was a massive big move there from Jack Passfield on board bike number 42 down into turn four on this occasion. As we see Santa Agis there back in the field, not the best of starts, but he will start carving through them now like a hot knife through butter. Remember, Super Sports proudly brought to you by Michelin this year. Good to see that they're supporting this uh, class of up-and-coming riders. So we've got Tom Edwards on the bike biz machine. Of course, he won a race at the final round last year and uh, ended up second in the championship. And Tom Bramish had an interrupted first year of the championship, didn't he, Steve, with bike problems. Wasn't really able to show his true potential on a super sport machine, but a lot of things have changed this weekend. He's been on the pace since we arrived here, and bike number 44 is absolutely flying. Yeah, look, there were some fundamental problems with his bike um, that were hidden that uh, they didn't know about, but uh, they've sorted that out now. So now, Tommy, it's, it's literally like restart time for him. And, uh, when you're enjoying your race and you're fast, and I'll tell you what, he'll be enjoying being right where he is right now. But uh, Jack Passfield, real good. We didn't even mention him, but he's been in the championship for a couple of years. Yeah, Jack Passfield's going fantastically well, and right behind him, Ollie Simpson on board bike number 45. Senna Edges is already up to uh, fifth position. Tell you what, there's going to be no worry about Senna oh. Edges' fitness. Oh, that was uh, Ollie Tight. Simpson, I think, was it? Wasn't it? Ollie Simpson on board bike number 45. Yeah. He's just lost a position to the hard-charging Senna Edges, who's coming through on board bike number 81. Have a look at the style of Senna Edges, who won the Super Sport 300 Championship a couple of years ago, defeating Maxi Stouffer in the, uh, the final round at Sydney Motorsport Park deep and late on the brakes into uh, into turn four was Ollie Simpson as well. Oh, up the inside goes Tommy Bramich. He's having that big uh, dice there with uh, Jack Passville and uh, looks like uh, Tom Edwards is just playing away. We've got a faller there. Can't quite make out who that is at the moment, but uh, looks like someone's gone down. Let's see if we can see their number. It's uh, under brakes into the Honda corner there. On the AMX replay, just see there, loses the, the front, the back comes around and uh, bang, they're all over. I think that might have been Harley's side on board bike number 95. He was on his side, unfortunately. That's Jack Passfield oh. gone down at the bottom of uh, turn 10. And uh, that looked like he just lost the front end on the brakes. Looks like he may have hurt his wrist or something there. So hopefully uh, Jack Passfield is uh, able to uh, get himself up. That's uh, bike sitting in a dangerous position there, Steve. Yeah, so, so is the rider. They've got a little bit of time to clear him out of there. So Here we go with another AMX replay. You can see him coming down here. He's trying to find a way up the inside of Tom Bramich. And oh, Tom he did. He Tom didn't. just goes across, didn't even know he was there, and uh, took the front wheel of Jack Passfield's machine out. Yeah, I mean, it, he got in there. We've got a red flag to clear up that uh, mess at the moment. Tommy Edwards won't be too happy about that. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see as we get that red flag out. He'll be getting that um, that red flag now. He'll cool down. He will not be happy because look at the lead that he's just managed to pull out. He's going to have to do it all again. Senna had just say he gets another opportunity. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there at the, uh, at the start, but he got a great jump off the line. And uh, then by the time they came out and the camera angle changed, he'd been swamped by a majority of the field and he was back to ninth position as they made their way through turn one. But won't make any difference now because he'll be starting from the front row of the grid in this uh, restart. I reckon we'll be probably looking at a five or maybe six lap restart because the original journey was, uh, was ten laps. We completed two laps of that, uh, of that ten. As we make our way back round onto the uh, the grid. Let's hope that uh, Jack Passfield is okay. Looks like he was grabbing at his wrist there. Let's hope there's no major damage to uh, Jack because he was showing a, a real lot of pace in that race. Yeah, he certainly was. He was um, yeah on the pace. We can just see there. Look, they're looking at that wrist. Um, just uh, taking his helmet off, uh, Jack Passfield. Of course, the race safe team uh, on the scene in a matter of minutes. Uh, no better medical care available at a racetrack anywhere in the world than uh, what race safe provide here in Australia. No, absolutely not. They're uh, on the ball. The teams and the riders love racing uh, when those guys are around because there's nothing left to chance. Uh, the bikes come back round to the start finish grid. It's not just the, the medical as well, it's also the. Uh, the physiotherapy oh, yeah. and all of the rest of the services they provide as well, isn't it, Steve? There's, right there's always a massive queue up to uh, to get the physio services from Friday morning at any ASBK round. Absolutely, it's a, it's the tune-up centre for riders, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So by the end of the weekend, uh, Mark and uh, Alexandria will both they'll need to tune up at the end of the weekend, won't they? Absolutely. Right, looking at the uh, the riders back on the grid now. Well. Tom's giving us the thumbs up. He's pretty happy. We'll have a look at the AMX uh, replays now. That was uh, bike number uh, 
95 crashing down there at the uh, the bottom. That's Harley side, and unfortunately his bike ended up on its side. And uh, only a couple of corners later, we saw this incident at turn 10, which was uh, Tom Bramwich uh, just turning across the front. He didn't even know that uh, Jack Passfield had sort of committed to a move up the well, inside. Well, Passfield committed a little bit too deep and then didn't tip it in. You know what I mean? He needed to tip it in more. He, he got in sort of like a little bit out of his control. Tommy, Tommy Bramwich was always going to tip in there. It wasn't Tom's uh, yeah, And issue. he wouldn't have known that he was there. No, he was in front. Uh, but uh, Jack Passfield left that break a little bit too late too late he didn't commit to it fully he sort of like backed out and that was his issue if he had committed to it and lent in rather than try to pull out he, he perhaps he might have made it through just uh, looked like a decent shunt to the side of uh, tom bramage's bike there so i have to uh yeah, well they'll be checking that out on the grid to make sure that everything's a-okay you can see center edge pulling up there onto the uh, the grid steph redmond his rider coach who, who will be accompanying him overseas uh when they head off uh during the uh, during the week to uh, race in that Spanish Championship or the Junior World Championship for uh, for Moto Two. Yeah, what a what a time he's got coming up ahead, hasn't he? It's going to be fantastic for him. There's, what's that? There's a lot of smoke on the left hand side. Yeah, I think it might be someone's generator or something that's uh, blowing a bit of smoke. Uh, interesting to see too in the uh, the off season. Senna Agis has been doing a lot of cycling training with uh, Glenn Allerton, who's also been acting as a, uh, a mentor. And uh, Glenn actually made the comment to me that uh, the kid is just so determined to do anything he can and uh, training extremely hard in the off-season very, very well. Let's head down to the grid uh, with KP. Yeah, I've got Ollie Simpson here with me. You've got you've qualified P4, but talk us through what's happening out there um, in terms of track temperatures and, and nerves and what people are kind of, how, how they're approaching this race. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's always hard being the first race, you know, for the season. Um, everyone's got a few, few nerves and uh, everyone's a bit jittery out there, but, yeah, just the quicker you can calm down, it just makes it easier, but, yeah, good. And do you think it is is nerves, or are people having trouble with the tyres, or...? It's a very hard uh, track on the tyres, like for a lot of so many left-handers, but uh, it's hard to tell. We've only done two laps, so I guess it'll play a part more towards the end of the race. OK, excellent stuff. Thanks, Ollie. Thank you. We'll go and have a chat to Ty Lynch. Hello, Ty. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, doing OK. Doing OK, right. tell us about that one one lap wonder you just had then because it uh, looked pretty mental from where we were standing. Yeah, look, try being in the hot seat. It was uh, it was pretty crazy. It was pretty crazy seeing it all unfold in front of us. Uh, a couple of kids got a bit ambitious, but no, it was good. It was good. good. Yeah, you definitely missed a bullet there. And how's the wind out there? The wind's actually not that bad compared to yesterday. Yesterday, this wind, the wind was shocking. So, yeah, the wind's a lot easier to deal with today, that's for sure. Yeah, OK, fantastic, Ty. Well, good luck for the rest of the race. Cheers, thank you. Excellent stuff. We're just going to go and find um, Bike 81. I'll um, send it back up to you boys for a, for a hot second. Thanks, KP. Yeah, great to see that uh, Ty Lynch actually getting the support of uh, 727 Moto as well. That uh, very impressive team that's been put together. And the personnel involved in that team, there's certainly a massive brains trust there that's uh, available to the, uh, the Superbike riders in uh, both Jed Metcher and Brock Pearson stepping up the Superbike, but also Super Sport rider uh, Ty Lynch. Yeah, totally. It's, uh, you know, he's definitely deserved it. He was uh, on a roll until unfortunately he had a, a big crash last uh, time he raced at uh, Winton uh, in the middle of last year. So it's unfortunate for him that uh, now he's got to rebuild, but he's uh, pretty much taken off from where he left off. So it's, um, you know, good to see. Uh, and it, his confidence will be building and his speed will be building. And as we said at the start, before this race, I mean, he's got some world-class riders um, to judge his skill against. We must have a look at the uh, replays on the AMX replay of these uh, incidents. Harley side at uh, turn four, Honda corner this weekend. And then also uh, turn 10 at the other end of the circuit see this incident here what you're saying steve is that tom bramwich had already tipped into the corner but uh jack was just a little bit late to commit to that corner trying to move up the inside of uh, of tom and as you mentioned ty lynch had a fantastic view of it he was right behind and uh unfortunately it looks like jack, jack passfield uh, may have sustained a, a small injury to the uh, to the wrist yeah let's hope that they can get that sorted let's hope it's just a niggle and not too bad let's head down to kp Hi, team. Yeah, I've got Senna Agis here. Now, you really dodged a bullet there. There was some pretty wild stuff happening. Yeah, it's never good to see a red flag, and I hope uh, Jack's OK. But uh, we had a bit of a problem off the start line then, and um, I'll try not to make the same mistake. But um, I tried to weave. I was a bit stressed on the first lap. I tried to weave through the traffic, but I hope everyone's OK from the crash. 
Yeah. And what what happened? What happened for your start? Where where did you lose time just then? I just haven't done many starts on the 600, and uh, I think my 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 strategy off the start was wrong. So I just have to try again. Excellent. Well, we look forward to round two. Thank you. Thanks. He's a pretty quick learner, Senna, so I don't think he'll be making the same mistake twice. No, he perhaps like, slipped the clutch too much. Right, Super Sport, uh, Michelin Super Sport restart coming up shortly, but first, a quick break here from Phillip Island. Carving through twisties. Nailing the perfect landing. to every corner. Losing yourself on the open road. There's no feeling like it. The howl of the wind in your ears. Feeling every vibration. Every inch of the tarmac. Just right. AWMF can help power your passion. We offer flexible tailored finance solutions to motorcycle and marine customers Australia wide. Our motorcycle and marine specialists can help you finance your motorcycle, scooter, personal watercraft or boat package with quick and easy approvals, fixed rate terms, flexible finance options and competitive rates. Call AWMF on 1300 263 123 or visit the website today. Welcome back to Phillip Island and the first round of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul. And we are getting ready for a restart in Michelin Supersport race number one. It is or was a 10 lap journey. We had two laps and unfortunately we had a red flag due to a couple of crashes. We're now looking at an eight lap restart which is about to get underway. On the front row of the grid we will have uh, Tom Edwards, Tom Bramage and Senna Agis. And Senna Agis can make up for that, uh, well, not very good start that he had in the uh, the first leg, Steve. By oh, his own admission, he hasn't done a lot of starts on the uh, the 600. I think that one will be a pretty steep learning curve for him. Uh, he definitely didn't get that one right. No, he didn't, but he knows what he did then, so he'll probably try something the opposite now. I mean, there's a few different ways you can start these bikes. You can hold the revs up high, then slip the clutch a lot, or you can leave the revs low and just drive it off the line. So, um, you know, he'll have a good feel for it now because obviously the clutch does feel a lot different when you're under pressure on the grid and he, as we, you know, as, as he said and as you've said, Phil, he hasn't had a lot of uh, practice at that. So uh, he gets another go straight away. I think it's uh, a real good opportunity for him. Yes, yeah, so I'll be heading off uh, on their uh, warm-up lap now. The other interesting thing is uh, in the uh, Supersport Championship uh, this year, 
We've got the three tyre war that we saw, a uh, three brand tyre war that we saw last year in the Superbike class happening in Supersport because we've got Dunlop, we've got Michelin, and we've got Pirelli all fighting for honours in the uh, the Michelin Championship. Michelin will be desperate to try and make sure that their tyres win. They're sponsoring the class. Oh, absolutely. I mean, everybody's out there. All the manufacturers involved. They're all welcome. Bridgestone's another one that um, are here this weekend. So. Um, you know, that's the, one of the things that I really do like about uh, this Australian Superbike Championship, our control tyre rule, is that uh, all the manufacturers can come, but uh, if they do come to play, they've got to be able to let the, everybody uh, have the same tyres. So, um, you know, it's a real good rule, and there's still, you know, some good healthy competition between the tyre manufacturers, and, uh, you know, there's a lot to play for in this class. As you can see, a big crowd in here at Phillip Island. The fence is lined pretty much all the way down Gardner Strait and Turn 1. Great to see. And uh, I think you mentioned this morning, Steve, biggest crowd for uh, an ASBK standalone round that we've seen here for a very, very long time. Absolutely. Scotty Nicholson there right on the warm-up lap. He won the warm-up lap in the first part of the race. It looks like he's going to have another go this time round. Good to see him back, though. He's got that tra traditional pink paint job. Um, which uh, he's um, had mostly throughout his career, so uh, good to see him uh, back on a bike. He had a couple of years off after a big crash, I think it was at Darwin, Darwin wasn't yeah. on a uh, Super Sport 300, but uh, has been uh, very well placed in quite a few of the uh, the 600 uh, class races uh, over the last few years, so great to see him continuing on again this year, and he's still only very young as well, so uh, he's got a lot of racing time left uh, on board that machine. So we make our way down to uh, the grid. I think uh, Scott's won the, uh, the warm-up lap once again, Steve. The rest of the field coming around now to take up their positions on the grid. One person that's not out there on the grid has decided to retire from ASBK Racing is Aidan Hayes, who uh, won the, uh, the summer series that held over the, uh, the mid-season break uh, between the end of last year's championship. But uh, he's decided that uh, he needs to spend some more time with his family, so uh, Aidan Hayes won't be joining us uh, retiring in the off-season. Uh, ready to go racing again. Senna Adjes will be starting from uh, pole position. So they've reverted back to their original grid positions. Tom Bramage in position number three. Tom Edwards in the middle as we get ready to go racing. Michelin Supersport race number one. Supersport is go as they get a good start off the line. Tom Edwards, you can see the quality there as he got an excellent launch off the line. Senna Adjus has definitely done a lot better on this occasion and pulls into third, third place. I think Tom Bramwich was just trying to go up the inside of him as they made their way down through turn one. But Senna says no, and he rolled the bike in this a little bit faster and maintained second position, so he's about seven places higher than what he was in the initial start at the same position. Yeah, well uh, he's going to be a danger for the guys then because he caught back up to those front guys pretty quickly did Senna, so uh, good to see him up there now, a much better start as you said. Uh, Ollie Simpson is there in fourth position, good start by him, and uh, looks like uh, Ty Lynch is up there as well. Ollie Simpson may have just gone up to third with a big move on the brakes into, uh, was on Honda Corner at uh, turn four there over Tom Bramage, but the black line that was left by a race leader, Tom Edwards, as he made his way through turn three, Stoner Corner, or Motul Corner, Yamaha Financial Services Corner, this weekend was outrageous. He has left a massive big stain on the other uh, tarmac there at turn three, smoking it up on the first lap. Yeah, absolutely. And up the inside, Senna has a bit of a look, but he can't quite make it uh, through the Alpine Stars' um, Lukey Heights. So we've got Honda versus Yamaha at the front. We've got Dunlop versus Michelin. Right behind is Ollie Simpson on board bike number 45. Tom Bramwich on 44. Then it's Jack Hyde on board bike number 28 doing a good job as well. Good to see Tom Drain there up in that top eight as well. Um, moving up into this class, a really good result for him. It'd be fantastic seeing him get into the top ten, get a good solid top ten to kick it off. Well, you're saying about riders with overseas international experience. Tom Drain is a multi-time AMA champion, having raced plenty of races in, uh, in America as well. So another young man from my country, New South Wales, that has certainly got a big future. Tommy Edwards standing first lap, 41.0. That's a pretty good start, 263 k's an hour down the main straight here at Phillip Island. Well, Tom Bramage has managed to get back ahead of Ollie Simpson, who was uh, pretty uh, pretty late on the brakes in that first lap down into uh, turn four Honda corner. We head back now to Yamaha Financial Services corner. Look at another big 
black line from uh, from Tom Edwards on board bike number 26. Well, he's uh, he knows what Casey Stone needs to do in that corner, and he's doing suit on a super sport bike, mind you, Steve. Yeah, pretty impressive to see these guys, and it just shows you how close they are the limit. One of the riders wide there. I think um, that might have been Nicholson on board 39. Yeah. So unfortunately for him, uh, he's uh, run off. Uh, no jump starts, which means that was a clean start. So they're in it for keeps now. You get to see coming uh, through there was Mitch Kuhn on board bike number 58. Always stands out, always a very well presented uh, machine in his sharp leathers and uh, the pink and white bike, bike number 58, all the way from Queensland. We go back to Queensland for round two, so uh, Mitch Kuhn will be feeling far more at home uh, once we get up to uh, the northern state. Senna just sitting in there behind Tommy Edwards at the moment. Doesn't appear to be trying to make too many moves, yet to be seen whether he can or not. But uh, Tom's just out front there doing what he can do. I'm sure that he's got a little bit in hand, but uh, Senna right on the back wheel at the moment. Uh, he'll be definitely having a big look at Tom to see where his strengths are. And, you, can uh, see, you can see moving around there a little bit at turn 12 was, uh, was Tom Edwards' bike, but he still managed to get excellent drive out onto the straight. And uh, tell you what, that Honda's pretty quick, so uh, not being able to pull out of the slipstream uh, gives you an idea of how quick Tom Edwards' exit of Turn 12 was. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, Tommy Edwards is, um, you know, he's on the R6. The R6 is probably the newer of the two design bikes. Um, when that R6 came out, it was, uh, you know, it was pretty hot to trot with a you know, little bit of an advantage over the other machine. So the Honda's still a good machine, but uh, work to be done. Another big black line left by our race leader, Tom Edwards on board bike number 26 as he made his way through turn three and down to Honda Corner turn four again. The gap uh, back to uh, Tom Bramich has now got out to about uh, 1.2 seconds and uh, Tom Bramich in turn has managed to uh, open up a gap about 0.6 of a second over Ollie Simpson on board bike number 45. Great to have Ollie back in the championship. He was supposed to race the last round last year, wasn't he, Steve? But his bike played up. Then he was going to race in the, uh, the 300s because the, the family was there. All of them were there. Going to, uh, they had a spare bike, but then he thought, no, that's going to take the attention away from the rest of the uh, the rest of the family. As here we go, Senna edges down the inside. Can he get the job done? He can. That was a clean move on the run down the hill into a turn 10. And that part of the uh, the track, uh, Steve, very, very hard to try and get the bike stopped there. It might not look it on the TV. That's a very steep hill. Well, it is. I mean, we, we saw before that's where Jack Passfeld um, didn't make it. As we have a look on the AMX replay, nice and clean um, through Lukey Heights. He just makes that move. He commits to the corner. Tommy Edwards nowhere to go there. And he made that pass quite easily. Uh, in a lot of edge grip there. Uh, and now Tommy right on the back wheel. Tommy should have a slight speed advantage down the straight, but Senna's got to do everything he can to try and pull out a few bike lengths, and he did. I think uh, Senna Agis's corner running speed is, uh, is one of the things that I've noticed about his riding style, that he seems to run into the corners very, very deep and late on the brakes. You can see now he just doesn't seem to take his chin off the tank. That uh, Arrow Helmet is just plastered to the tank as we make our way through turn three again. Tom Edwards no, laying another big, massive black line. You can see Senna's pushing the envelope now. He's got the foot out trying to uh, assist in the braking. Simpson uh, looks like he may be uh, getting caught by Jack Hyde on board bike number 28 that's, uh, that's on a bit of a charge. Yeah. Uh, on the last lap, he was actually two tenths of a second faster. John Litteris is also having a good run too. He's moved up into sixth position now, so he's made his way forward. Oh, big moment there. Didn't quite see who that was, but uh, lucky to get away with that one. I think that was the battle of uh, John Quinn, Luke Sanders and Noel Mann, actually, that we were just looking at then as we Whoop. make our way across the top of Pirelli Corner and down into uh, Turn 10. I think something might have happened to Scotty Nicholson as well. He's uh, falling back down the timesheet, so it looks like uh, the dream run for him may be over there. There's Ty Lynch having that dice with, um, with uh, young... Um, John Litteris in the 308 machine. Yeah, I think Dallas Skier's in that battle as well. He's the rider on the back of the uh, the group on board bike number 86. As we mentioned, got the uh, the very well credentialed Glenn Richards working with him this weekend as well. And hmm, look at Dallas trying to go around the outside of uh, Johnny Litteris, who's a multi-Australian uh, dirt track and I think also Supermoto champion as well, and one of the front runners in the Super Sport 300 class only a couple of years ago. This is a great little uh, battle between these three, isn't it? And it's uh, Dallas Gear who leads at the moment. Uh, yeah, it looks like um, Scotty Nicholson crashed out, unfortunately, which was why he ended up heading down the timesheet there. The rider is up in the AOK, which is uh, good to see. 
Tom Edwards has calmed down on the black line painting there through turn three a little bit, uh, but still leaving some nice big darkies as he makes his way down in towards turn four. Just shadowing Senna Agis, our race leader on board bike number 81, the JMT Civil Elf and MIE Racing Honda CBR 600. Good to see a bit of a ridey at the, uh, the front of the field in that too, Steve, yeah. with uh, a Honda, which we don't see that often in the Australian Supersport Championship, uh, doing incredibly well this weekend. Well, the Honda's always been a good machine, but uh, you know what it's like. I mean, if, if the factory were here with, you know, racing Hondas, probably half the field would have one, but they're not, you know, so the Yamaha is the latest and greatest thing, but the Honda's still a good bike, as we can see in the hands of um, Senna Agis. You, they've both got different strengths. The Honda is uh, got a sweet handling chassis. The engine may be not quite as fast as the Yamaha, but, uh, you know, it uh, makes up for it you know, around the corners. And Damon Reese has showed that in the past as well with yeah. some very impressive rides on board a, a CBR 600. Look at the style of Senna Agis as he makes his way through turn 12 now. Elbow down on the ground. Tom Edwards tucks in behind the screen. Tries to uh, make up that couple of bike length uh, lead that Senna has been able to pull on the last lap. A 135.6 for uh, Senna Agis on that last lap. Uh, sorry, a 135.6. 135.5. Fastest lap of the race, though, still at 135.2, set by Tom Edwards. So I'm just wondering if Tom Edwards is just keeping his powder dry at the moment. They're sitting in the centre edges of slipstream and uh, letting him do all the, uh, the donkey work at the moment, ready to come back for a, a last lap lunge. Well, it's definitely easier to follow than, than to lead the way. So centre edges is using more mental, uh, you know, issues at the moment, more mental energy I, I should say, um, so you know Tommy Edwards, he just needs to hang in there and try and conserve his energy and on the last couple of laps, um, you know which we're getting into now, he's got to try and decide where he can get past and if he can make a break. Looking at the battle here between Jack Hyde and Ollie Simpson Jack Hyde on 28, just making his way past you can see there how tucked in behind the screen uh, it is, they've got matching leathers as well Steve <laughs> Back to our race leaders. Senna still leading from Tom as they make their way up across the top of uh, Lukey Heights through Suzuki and Alpine Stars corners and down into Pirelli we come. Yeah, not much in it there, like uh, maybe a little bit out of uh, that corner, Pirelli, and into Michelin they go. So they'll be coming round to complete six laps of the, uh, the eight-lap journey. So I think the planning for the uh, the final lap will uh, start as we go across the oh, finish line. Oh, Tommy Edwards, massive, massive money. No, there's an issue. Flat, he's got a flat tyre. No, that, there's that, an issue there for that, sure. That yep. flat. Oh, he is so lucky. So he's got some sort of puncture yeah, or something needs on, to the, pull uh, off the on the track. back tyre. Yeah. Oh, he is so lucky to get away with that. That, that was um, incredible skill to be able to keep that uh, bike upright. Skill and luck, but uh, that is something that he did not need. We know that Senna Agis, as we had a look on the AMX replay, he's gone in, the back's come round. It still looks pumped up there. It looks like he's had some sort of uh, massive decompression right at that point there, and he's managed to ride it out. He still thinks he just hit us something. He's on the gas. It won't recover. Flat tyre. Look at how disappointed he is there. He won't be disappointed for the fact that Senna's, Senna's going to win this race because Senna's out, but for the rest of the year in the championship, he's got a lot of work to do now. Yep, that's 25, 25 possible points uh, go missing for uh, for Tom Edwards, and Senna Edges now has got a very handy lead over the remainder of the field. That moves Tom Bramage up into a second place and Jack Hyde up into a third. So uh, <laughs> Jack Hyde, just looking at it, uh, Steve, that could very well be... Um, his first or maybe second uh, podium in the uh, in the Supersport class. Well, I would go to say that... Uh, That'll be his first podium. And I would go to say it'd have to be Tom Bramich's first 600 podium too, wouldn't it? And also, that would be uh, his previous Beth Jack, well, was fifth place. So, uh, yep, a uh, great result for uh, both of those riders. But we've still got one and a half laps to go, and as we've seen, anything can happen. It's not over till it's over. All we do know is that St. Agis has got a massive lead right now, 6.6 .6 seconds over the rest of the field. He may not know it yet, uh, and he's um, heading into that uh, lap seven of eight, so really does need to uh, be careful on this last lap now. Yep, last lap board shown to our race leader, Senna Agis, on the last lap he did a 135.690. His fastest lap of the race, a 135.297, but the fastest lap of the race, one one thousandth of a second faster by Tom Edwards, but unfortunately his race will finish on the, uh, the grass next to the uh, start-finish line. Down in towards turn one we go now. This battle going on for uh, the minor placings. Uh, John Littress on board the 308 machine. Ty Lynch uh, on board the 85 machine. And I think that that's uh, Dallas Skier in that battle as well. They're battling for fifth place. So uh, 
is Johnny Lutris has moved back up into fifth ahead of uh, Dallas Gear on board the 86 machine. And on the back of that little group there is uh, Ty Lynch on board bike number 85. Tom Drain's moved up into uh, eighth as well. Look at the drive out of there from uh, Dallas Gear. His bike's looking pretty composed. And uh, Dallas is riding incredibly well. I think uh, Glenn Rich is not only tuning up the motorcycle, he's also tuning up... Uh, tuning up Dallas as well. Yeah, no, they're, they're a good team doing a good job. So, um, you know, really good to see. But I've just also been corrected that this machine is pretty much not the old machine. Trevor Hedge from MC News has told me, because he's a Honda man, he knows everything about it. This bike is new and this guy is doing the job on it. He certainly is. Well, he's got wings and he's flying around turn 12 for the final time now. Senna Adjus will take the race win as he comes down across the line. He will take the win by a considerable margin over Tom Brannock. So congratulations goes to Senna Agis and the JMT Civil team as they make their way across the line now. It is Tom Brannock takes second. The, the Bear Bird gets on the podium for the first time, as you mentioned, Steve. And we're now trying to find out who will take third place. I think it is Jack Hyde comes across the line in third position. Look at this battle. Lutris just gets the better of Dallas Gear. Yeah, what a job there. Um, brilliant job by him. And, uh, you know, Johnny Littress is improving all the time on that 600 machine. But, uh, boy, you can't take it away from centre. He's a quick learner, isn't he? Yeah. He it's... certainly is. You can see the uh, the little winglets there on the uh, the Honda. Yeah, well, I thought the winglets were the only thing that's new on that bike. But, in fact, uh, I'm completely wrong. It's uh, had a lot of different uh, things uh, done to it. Uh, new combustion chamber, better cooling, uh, lots of different things. And, of course, as you can see, that's made it a, a race winner. Well, congratulations to our uh, top three, Senna Adjust, Tom Bramage and Jack Hyde. Also, great ride from Ollie Simpson in fourth position. John Littress, great ride from him in fifth. Great battle with uh, Dallas Skier and Ty Lynch, who took out sixth and seventh position. Tom Drain in eighth. Mitch Coon into the top ten in ninth position. And Tim Large rounds out the top ten. Uh, John Quinn there as well. Brilliant job by him in um, 11th. Uh, Noel Mann, Luke Sanders in 13th, Tarvin Walker in 14th. The last point, Reese Belling. Good to see him back in the championship. Well, let's have a look now at the Honda race highlights for our first Michelin Supersport race of the day. And speaking of Hondas, there was one Honda that got a good jump off the line but didn't get the best jump as they made their way down towards turn one. Was back in the field, back to ninth position, Steve Martin, with a lot of work to do. Yeah, it didn't take him long to work his way forward, though, but there was a couple of um, highs and lows. Uh, this man went down, and then, of course, Jack Passfield bought out the black flag. He tried to head in but uh, ran into the back of Tommy Bramich, and uh, that was all over him. Looks like he's got some sort of wrist injury uh, that might put him out. Yeah, we had a red flag stoppage and an eight-lap uh, journey to uh, restart for Michelin Supersport. Senna Adjus didn't lead as they got down towards turn one, but he still got a very good start, and it wasn't much uh, later than that that he actually did take the lead over Tom Edwards. And Scott Nicholson got it all wrong and took the uh, the road out uh, towards the, uh, the long lap penalty at turn four. We saw a couple of riders getting out of the seat and uh, one rider crashing uh, at the bottom end of the circuit as well. Yeah, and I reckon that was Scotty Nicholson that went down there, so in the Ducati corner. Meanwhile, this guy, uh, Tommy Edwards, he went for a wild ride, didn't he? So lucky to get away with that. He's dejected there, but it didn't take him long to uh, get up and start talking to the fans about it. So well, I'm sure we'll see him back out later this afternoon. Yeah, it looked like he was just planning his last lap assault, but unfortunately it wasn't to be with a uh, flat tyre. And this man ran away with the victory. Senna Adjus, congratulations to him. Congratulations to the JMT Civil Machine. And also that great battle between uh, Littress and uh, Dallas Gear was just sorted out right on the line. Well, hopefully our top three will be heading to the... Uh, AMX Superstore's podium very, very shortly. We'll get to hear from them. And as you mentioned, uh, first podium for a couple of riders there. That's always a very exciting time in your career, especially when you've stepped up uh, to the next higher class over what you've been racing in for a couple of years. Well, look, they may have had a little bit of help. A couple of guys may have fallen and stuff like that. But, you know, you get yourself on the podium and it does boost your confidence up. You know, when you're running high on confidence, it, it makes you a better rider. So, you know, for Tom, I think it's a good thing and also for the other guy. Down to AMX Superstore's podium with KP in our top three. Yes, for the Michelin Supersport 600. Oh my gosh, Jack Hyde, third, first podium. Well done. You look exhausted. Yeah, thank you. I'm exhausted. You know, I've worked really hard all weekend. I've been nowhere all weekend. So going into that race, no expectations at all. Uh, I got pretty lucky with a few riders. Cool. Unlucky for them, but lucky for me crashing and um, uh, just, yeah, managed to stay upright and finish the race. And here I am. 
So. Yes, yeah, smile. You should be happy. Yeah, I am happy. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, good work. Great work, Jack. Okay, and in P2, Tom Bramich of Apex Bear Bird. Your first podium. Congrats. I feel like you've worked really hard for this. Yeah, last year was definitely a struggle and we've come a long way since then. But, um, yeah, we can't be happy with that. We The gap to the front was massive and, uh, yeah, we got to figure out how to get, get that closer. But massive thanks to all my sponsors, uh, Apex Steel, the Bear Bird, Carl Cox Motorsport and, yeah, all our technical partners. You came really close to being wiped out out there as well. Yeah, I felt that in the first uh, stint and, uh, yeah, I think uh, everyone gets a bit keen in the first few laps. So, yeah. Thanks, Tom. Well done. Congratulations. And in P1, Senna Agius of JMT Civil Racing. Senna, well done. You were miles ahead of the field. No, thank you. Um, I witnessed it all out there. I had a, a horrible first start. Um, I hit a bird on the first lap, and then I had to regroup for the rerun. Um, unlucky for Tommy, I heard that he had a, a problem, so um, I hope to see him out there in the next race. Um, I thank to everyone at Honda and JMT Civil, and, of course, Michelin. Excellent stuff. Thanks so much, Senna. Congratulations. A big round of applause for P1 Senna Agius, P2 Tom Bramich and P3 Jack Hyde. Well done, boys. Thanks very much, KP. Great to hear from our top three. Congratulations to Senna Agius and the JMT Civil Team. A great victory on board the, uh, the Honda getting ready for the next race on today's program, which is the Yamaha R3 Cup. The race has been reduced for uh, one lap. That will be coming up after this short break here at Phillip Island. Now in order to celebrate Yamaha's 60th year of competing in Grand Prix, Yamaha is pleased to announce the all-new YZF R7. Here's a bike that rekindles the spirit of the TZ races from a bygone era. A machine that is affordable, accessible, and capable on both the road and the track. Resplendent in the iconic red and white color scheme, the all-new YZF R7 evokes memories of Yamaha's legendary world champions. The new R7 offers the ultimate adrenaline rush. Whether you're hustling around a closed circuit or exploring the twisties on a weekend blast. From the first twist of the throttle, you'll feel fully connected to the surface thanks to an ultra-responsive 689cc twin-cylinder engine. Pop out from behind the screen and feel the responsive, agile chassis as you tip it in. There's no better feeling. Only Yamaha has this pure race DNA, so only Yamaha can make this tribute that marks 60 years of racing and winning at the top table. All new YZF R7, celebrating 60 years of World Grand Prix racing. To adapt to the, the tires, uh, to be honest, it didn't take a crazy amount of time, you know. Uh, for sure, with the super bike, the tires are softer, but uh, in general, we were able to to adapt and find a great feeling. And to be honest, the difference uh, or the feeling difference is not so much between this and, uh, and the tires we would run uh, on a cold weekend. To be honest, it was a little harder the first laps, but I didn't know the circuit. But immediately, as soon as I was ready to push, the, 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 the tires were there and ready to go immediately. Yeah, the performance has been uh, been really good. Overall, uh, for the, the amount of laps we can make uh, and the consistent performance of the tires, I've been really surprised with this. To be able to do, you know, 40-something laps with the tires and have no issues, you know, still doing some of my best times at the end. So uh, the durability is amazing. Thinking of grabbing a bite tonight. Any new places close by? Well, actually. Oh, and there's also. Oh. I think 20 is enough. Yeah, yeah, that should do us.
less shit tomorrow. Welcome back to Phillip Island and the first round of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Superbike Championship from this magnificent circuit. We are getting ready for the first race for today, the second race for the weekend for the Yamaha Financial Services R3 Cup. And Glenn Nelson, Henry Snell and Varus Fleming will start from pole position. Joining me in the commentary box two is Mark Brax, uh, Teo Aksu, Brody Gorwith and Cameron Dunker, all stars of this class, Braxy, there on row two. And then there's <coughs> Brandon Demery coming back, Laura Brown and Jay Russo in the, the top 12, top nine. And then we've got Liam Waters, uh, Hayden Nelson ma making a jump, as well as Clay Ke Clegg coming up from the Oceana Junior Cup for 2022. Yeah, Sam Pizzetta, Jamie Port and Jonathan Nalas uh, round out row five with Cooper Roundtree, Mitch Simpson and Lincoln Knight on row six. Once again, a very healthy field for the Yamaha Financial Services R3 Cup. On their warm-up lap at the moment, yes, and Glenn Nelson hasn't been off the podium in the previous eight races, uh, with what his uh, stupendous effort at the bend at the close of last year, and he's uh, carried on like he meant to. So, so that is the race start, part of me. You've uh, coming back from the other, uh, Glenn Nelson straight in the lead. Uh, Henry Snell, nice little kid too. Some of the uh, very, very, what would you say, humorous with a bit of uh, banter thrown in when you're talking to them. Yeah, I think that may have been Teo actually that's just come through into the lead, isn't it, on board bike number uh, 91. Big move there around uh, through turn two. Glenn Nelson, as you mentioned, was leading. That was a very short-lived uh, affair. No, Teo actually, I'll put a good, uh, good raps on him too. Came through the junior ranks and uh, he was up there right with it yesterday afternoon. He was leading for quite a substantial amount of time in the uh, R3 Cup race, but just got lost, dragged it on the line. He learned a bit not to lead onto the straight, but... Uh, Glenn Nelson again, uh, he won the second race. It was at, and one of them got relegated to Varus Fleming when he looked like he was going to win yesterday. Someone out into the dirt there on the exit of Siberia. Uh, yeah, he got uh, done for exceeding the track limits on the exit of turn 12 yesterday afternoon, did Varus. Well, it's one of those things in this class that just seems to be one of the things that happens all the time. So uh, it really must be cracking down on it this year as we see Glenn Nelson leading across the top. Uh, oh, there's a couple of uh, geese on the other side of the track there. They just sit there all day. I've been on a ride, though, and there's five sets of them the other week. They just don't move. But anyway, Glenn Nelson, can he do it again? Two wins from two yesterday. Is he going to continue his merry way? He's really come along. And the last time he was here two years ago, he still has a few... Uh, Memories of that incident at Siberia where he severely broke his leg. But he's come back and after he's got through that breakthrough wins at the bend last year, he's really starting to lift his game. Teo actually back into the lead and I think that may be Jay Russo that's uh, blasted on past to uh, take the lead as they get down towards the bottom end of Garden Straight. But coming through very quickly, Henry Snell, well he smashed them all as he gets to the end of the straight. Rax, he uh, just didn't even really need to use the brakes either. He just went straight into turn one in the lead. I don't know if they actually use the brakes on these 300s going into turn one. It doesn't even look like they go back in gear. They just sort of sit up a little bit and just tip it into turn one. Uh, it's great racing here in the R3 Cup. All the, all the smaller categories are Super Sport 300. We had a great race there yesterday. But still leading as they go through uh, Ducati turn down into Honda Corner for the second time. Glenn Nelson in second. Baris Fleming, Teo Aksu, then Liam Waters, uh, Brody Gawith, Jay Russo and Sam Bazetta. Uh, the youngster from uh, South Australia in his first visit to Phillip Island in ninth position. Laura Brown getting back to speed uh, on the Yamaha, the bike biz teammate to uh, Tommy Edwards. Yeah, well, hopefully her tyres don't go flat like Tom Edwards' one did in that uh, super Yeah, what race. a wretched way to um, lose a race. But how quickly did it go flat as well as uh, we make our way up through Suzuki Corner now. And I think that's Varus Fleming back into the, uh, the lead on board bike number 35. The, uh, the pink flashes on the uh, the blue certainly stand out, doesn't it, as uh, the Moto Game Machine makes its way up towards the top of the hill. Well, Varus, oh, he's got very wide too. He was lucky to keep that on track, Braxy. Well, he got, it was a defensive line into turn 10 there, Phil. <laughs> It's not a defensive line I've seen used a lot. As we <laughs> make our way through. I don't know if he'd be using it again either. No, I don't know if it's going to catch on. <laughs> uh, sitting in second place is Henry Snell. Then it's Glenn Nelson in third, trying to come around the outside. Teo Aksu on board the all-black machine. Then it's Brody Gore with on 25. Oh. Liam Waters uh, is in sixth place. The top ten then rounded out by Sam Pizzetta, the young South Australian on 51. Teammate to uh, Arthur CC's Jay Russo. Cameron Dunker, who's been training the house down with Maxi Stofer up in, uh, in Newcastle. Valley, yeah. And then uh, we've got uh, Jonathan Nalos, JJ, as he likes to be known, rounding out the top ten. 
And uh, Varus Fleming uh, dropping back to fourth now after that run down the line. He heads off to Europe uh, next week to take part in the European Talent Cup. So another one of our uh, guys going over to Europe with a vast contingent of riders heading over. And a, quite a few that have already left as well yep. too, isn't it? Look at this, three abreast now as they make their way down through uh, Yamaha Financial Services, turn three. Past all the big black lines left by Tom Edwards in the, uh, the Michelin Supersport race earlier on today. Down into uh, turn four, and we can call it Honda Corner this weekend without yep. getting in trouble, Brexit. <laughs> I said that yesterday with Tommy Edwards. So making our way out of there, we've got a massive group of riders. How many riders is that in our lead group? That would have to be... 15, 16 riders uh, covered by, actually 14 riders covered by 1.7 seconds. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just becoming a par for the course these days, like that OJC race where uh, the top 12 are covered by a second at the end of the race. It just shows you the intensity, the level playing field of a lot of the machines and the amount of talent that's spread right through the ranks. Looked like a problem there for Jordan Simpson on board and bike number 23. He's just gone back a couple of places and bike number 25 is uh, off the circuit there. Unfortunately, hasn't been able to keep it upright and he's Brady gone Gilles. down. Yeah, yeah, Brady, Brady was up towards the front too, wasn't he? And Taya Axu's uh, dropped out of the race as well. Unfortunate for him. Which I didn't see what happened to Oh, there's, there's Taya there. Well, he's, uh, well, he's trans well, he was having a transponder problem yesterday as well, so... That's, uh, it's not him, but Maybe his me. transponders dropped out of the yep. race. But Teo is certainly sitting there trying to utilise the slipstream now. But it's Henry Snell that uh, seems to be the master of the slipstream. Making his way down towards turn one. Will he be able to hold off in the other uh, lead around the outside? Was that Varus Fleming? Yeah, I think it was. Yep, that is the 35 of Varus Fleming, the Moto Go machine. Tell you what, that was a big move around the outside as we made our way in towards turn one. Here we go with an AMX replay. We can see there running off the circuit, bike number 25, Brady Gore with it. He just tries to get it stopped coming down the hill. The back comes around, and then unfortunately he goes down. Hopefully not a lot of damage to either Brody or the motorcycle. It doesn't matter how much dirt tracking you're doing. When you put road tyres on the dirt going downhill, it's going to uh, end up with a, uh, a little kiss of the dirt, I'd say. Awesome drone footage there of the uh, riders making their way in towards Turn 4 and Varus Fleming just managing to hold off a very big attempt to try and get past. Not sure he's been able to uh, hold off Henry Snell as they make their way out of... Uh, Turn six and make their way back up the hill now towards Suzuki Corner. But as you can see, look at the size of that lead group snaking their way up there like a massive big conga line. That is a big conga line, and uh, what the top fifth, uh, top thirteen separated by two seconds here in this uh, Yamaha Finance Half Week Cup as they come over the top down into Pirelli Turn Ten for the fourth time of this six lap dash, being uh, shortened by one lap due to time constraints. But uh, Glenn Nelson now trying to make a bit of a break over it's no hang on yes it is and then uh Teo Aksu there Henry Snell there having a bit of a dip in sec, uh, third position so it's going to be quite interesting to see what this drag the line's going to be in the next couple of laps as they come down to complete lap number four of six I did notice that Varus Fleming did take a wider line on the exit of uh, the top of Lukey Heights there and down into a early corner again so maybe that is his line Braxy that he gets to the outside of the circuit trying to set up a move and uh, young Sam Pizzetta on board bike number 51 the Unitech racing machine is in this battle as well he's made his way right up there with a fantastic slip streaming effort down the front straight he's now sitting in second place as they make their way into turn two and Teo Axu hanging on the outside like a uh, pair of panniers you know the only certainty about this at the moment it's is, uncertain. That, is that by the time they get the Honda that uh, the, the positions would have changed as he comes up the side, number 51 again, having a good look, Sam Bezzetta. Is he going to get into the lead for the first time in his first visit to Phillip Island? The youngster. He, is, oh, he gets shuffled back to third position. But he was in the lead momentarily <laughs> until Teo Axu said uh, that he wanted to take the lead as they make their way out of Honda and down towards Ducati at the bottom end of the circuit. The furthest they are away from the uh, start-finish line at any point on the, uh, the circuit here as they make their way up the hill now and towards uh, Suzuki Corner. This is the area of the circuit, Braxy, that uh, on these bikes you need to really string it together and just, you can actually utilise the slipstream up there too, can't you? It yeah. might may be uh, undulating and twisty, but there's uh, plenty of slipstream on offer. Yeah, the old 125GP's bikes were specialties for that around the back there and the Moto 3 machines. Yes, it's that sort of circuit where you can uh, slipstream in a variety of places beside the main straight.
Elvara Fleming's uh, wide line work for him there. He just went up the back up the inside of, uh, I think it was Teo Aksu on board bike number 91 to move up into about fifth position. So we look now to the, uh, oh no, it's Teo Aksu that's in the lead. So who was that that he just went up the inside of? It must have been Liam Waters on the 181 machine. So now they come on to um, the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance front straight to get the last lap board. Aksu moves out of the slipstream, takes the lead. Bike 51, Sam Bezetta is moving up the inside. He's got a perfect line to dive bomb down into modal turn one for the last time. Well, Henry Snell into the lead. He's used the slipstream to his advantage a couple of times now, so he starts this final lap through the turn one area in the lead. Bike number 181, Liam Waters has come forward five positions on that run down the straight. He's now sitting in second place. So I think uh, his nickname is Midge. I think he's coming up to try and bite a couple of people uh, at the last minute, Braxy, and uh, make a big, big bid for the, uh, the win here in the second of our Yamaha Finance R3 Cup races this weekend. And, uh, well, we'll see what they do as they go through Honda Corner for the final time. Snell still leading, but look at the dive bombing antics. Glenn Nelson still in third position. Our race victor from yesterday. <laughs> Got the door well and truly slammed <laughs> in his face there. So we'll see as they come out of uh, Siberia for the final time. Like you said, the run up the hill, Phil. This big freight train of motorcycles. So it's Waters in the lead from Nelson, Snell, Axu, Fleming, Pazetta, uh, Jonathan Nalus, uh, Brandon Demery, the elder statesman in the field, Cameron Dunker and Hayden Nelson rounding out the top ten. Well, through this uh, final complex of corners and down into turn ten, the run to the finish starts here. It is still Waters that leads from Nelson, Snell, Teo Axu around the outside. Tries to get pushed a little bit wide there. Oh, the Moto Game Machine of Varus Fleming was uh, a little bit wild as they came out of there, but it is uh, Glenn Nelson. Looks like he could be perfectly positioned. And also Henry Snell on board bike number 12, Braxy. As we come around turn 12 for the final time, Nelson comes around the outside, goes into the lead. It is that uh, Waters has now tried to tuck into his slipstream as they come to the line, but it is Snell and Varus Fleming. Varus Fleming is storming home, and he could get the win. It's so close. I'm not going to call it, Braxy. We'll wait for the official timing to come up. And it says that, yes, Varus Fleming has taken the win by 0 0.012 of a second over Henry Snell on board bike number 12 and Tayu Aksu onto the podium on board bike number 91. What a race. Great to see the youngsters getting up there. Va finally worked for Varus Fleming. Don't lead onto the straight for the last time. And he did that to perfection. Glenn Nelson looked for all money he had, but that run, you just get swamped right at the end of it. Well, and Liam Waters, led coming through uh, turn 12, I think it was, ended up in fifth position. We shouldn't act surprised, Well, That one will be calling these races at Phillip Island. Yeah. It's the exact same scenario all the time. It harks me back to uh, many, many years ago where uh, a championship was decided at the last minute by a rider that was in seventh place coming out of turn 10 on the final lap. Varus Fleming takes the win on board bike number 35. Ahead of Henry Snell, Teo Aksu will join them on the podium. Glenn Nelson finished in fourth. Liam Waters in fifth. Hayden Nelson in sixth. Brandon Demery, the elder statesman in seventh, Sam Pazetta in eighth, and uh, Jonas Nalus. JJ rounds out the top uh, nine. With Cameron Dunker, then Jay Russo, uh, Mitch Simpson, the younger brother Ollie, Laura Brown, great result for her in 13th position, Lincoln Knight, Jack Favell, then Co uh, Clay Clegg, uh, Cooper Roundtree, then Jordan Simpson, the youngest of the Simos, Marcus Hamad, who just won the uh, Oceana Junior Cup race earlier on, Jaden Martin, Brian Kazan and Brody go with a DNF after crashing out at the top of uh, Lukey Heights. Tell you what, Hayden Nelson on board the 279 machine came from about 13th or 14th place on the last lap to get up to the sixth position. That's a great result from the young 14-year-old. Well, it's great to see him back on the deck after his uh, season was ruined last year at uh, Winton when he had that incident on the Saturday afternoon when saw him in the hospital with a broken leg. So there is uh, young Varus. He's getting ready to head overseas. And what better uh, thing to put in your resume so they can see that on the live streaming around the world here the t with a wind on the Moto Go Yamaha machine. Well, had some creative lines, but in the end, he had the most creative drive to the line and... And uh, that was what got him the win. So uh, congratulations to uh, Varus Fleming. Can't wait to hear from our top three. They are down at the uh, AMX Superstores podium right now. So looking to uh, get the track cleared. Pit exit will open again in uh, 1 minute 40 for the, uh, the next race. Track temperature is up to 37 degrees now. So track temperature constantly building here at Phillip Island. 
sunny conditions, not too much wind either. Unlike yesterday afternoon where the conditions were very, very windy. The uh, overall points so far for this round of the uh, the championship, Varus Fleming uh, on uh, 45 points, uh, Glenn Nelson on 43. Time to head down to the AMX Superstores podium with KP. Yes, the Yamaha 5 car P3 Taylor. Congratulations. That looks really hectic out there. Yeah, it was an awesome race. Just all credit to the boys. That was, well, was just awesome. <laughs> I'd just like to thank um, all my supporters, Triple X Raider Suspension, Triple M Motorcycles, JMC Motorcycles, Oakland Park Racing, and um, and Yamaha. <laughs> good work, good work, Tayo. Congrats. All right, and in P2, oh, that's a nice moment. Henry Snell from Mega Cycle Racing. Henry, why? Wow, you did really well out there. Yeah, it was a good race. All the boys put up a good competition. Just got picked by Varus on the line. But other than that, epic race. Exactly. Well done. You go and celebrate. Thank you. Thanks so much. And in P1, Yaris Fleming from Moto Go. Wow, Yaris, congratulations. You, you won by 0.12. Unbelievable. 0.012. I don't know, I don't know what to say because when I was coming around the last corner, I thought I already lost it. Then I saw the switch stream I got behind the boys and out of nowhere, I just got into first place. Yeah, well, that's a great way to start the year, so you must be thrilled. Thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you. Excellent stuff. A big congratulations to the top three, Yaris Fleming in P1, Henry Snell in P2, and P3, Teo Aksu. Well done. Thanks, KP. Congratulations to our top three. I love the emotion from our race winner there, Varus Fleming. Plenty more action coming up. The Alpine Star Superbike class is up next. The premiere show is about to begin back here at Phillip Island after this short break. Tinnies, a quintessential part of Australian boating. We love them for their versatility, durability, and most importantly, for producing everlasting memories on the water. The ultimate tinny setup demands the ultimate outboard motor, and Suzuki's large range of portable and mid-sized outboards are the perfect choice for the Aussie fisherman. At My Bike Insurance, we are motorcycle specialists. It's all in the name. We understand how important your motorcycle is to you. And because of this, we strive to provide peace of mind cover for you and your motorcycle, no matter where your bike takes you. Visit the My Bike website for a quick and easy quote or call the My Bike Insurance team on 1300 780 446 today. For us, the journey is not about the destination. The journey starts long before we hit the road. The gear we wear, the way it feels, and the safety it brings. Some say the journey never ends, but it has to start. Start your journey with AMX Superstores. Why? Because we ride too. Enjoy the journey with AMX Superstores.
Welcome back to Phillip Island and the first round of the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul from the spiritual home of Australian motorcycling, the Phillip Island circuit. We are getting ready for the big show to begin now. Steve Martin, the Alpine Star Superbike class has made their way out onto the grid. It is a massively changed year as we've seen. So many new riders in new teams. There's new setups, there's new personnel come into the teams. It's a very, very massive amount of excitement all through the paddock because everyone is just unsure of what's going to happen this year. The one thing that we do know is that Wayne Maxwell has continued on this year where he left off last year. Yeah, look, Wayne Maxwell is setting the bar, but apart from that, um, the others are closing in on him. Let's take a look at Brian Starring there as he sits there. New team, gone from Kawasaki, hadn't raced since Darwin last year. This morning in the warm-up, he was only a few tenths slower than Wayne Maxwell. Keep an eye on him. He's a man that can be on a mission. And then what about Josh Waters? Uh, he didn't have such a good year last year. He's had a bad couple of years, but he finds himself in the front row here, Phil. Incredible stuff from him. He's fast. He's back on a mission, I think he's got his confidence back. Daniel fouls on. The last time we saw him, he was laying in the grass with a broken leg. He's here. Incredible qualifying for him as well, putting the bike on the second row of the grid. I can't believe uh, what we're about to witness out there. There's just, uh, I can't think of a year where there's been more people changed. There's that man, Josh Waters. Shane Kindris, just to his uh, left there. The team, everyone happy and bubbly, looking for a podium. Allerton's also been strong in that team. This is going to be a fantastic year. Yeah, Josh looking pretty calm there and uh, looking pretty good. Uh, maybe time to go down to the uh, the grid with KP. Exactly, the Alpine Star Superbike grid and the energy is starting to build. With me now is General Manager of Destination Phillip Island, Kim Story. Kim, this is a true honour to kick everything off uh, at Phillip Island, round one of the Superbikes. Absolutely, we're so excited and pumped to welcome back all the spectators, all the teams, the officials, at the best racetrack in Australia and it's just wonderful and we've put on fantastic weather for everyone today. You sure have and tell me about Superbikes, are you into it or what? Absolutely, we love the speed, we love the noise and we love the people so we really invite and invite everyone to plan their holidays this year, get back and support regional tourism destinations and especially Phillip Island. 100%, thank you so much for talking Kim and uh, enjoy watching the race because it's going to be great at this fantastic track that you've offered us up. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, KP, and uh, good to hear from uh, Destination Phillip Island. It is a great destination to come to. There's some great roads to get here as well, Steve. Oh, there certainly is. There's uh, the back way if you're on a bike. You can get here in a hurry down the freeway. Plenty of different little towns uh, to stay at as well. You don't have to stay at Cows. Um, there's uh, plenty of little towns and lots of other things to do on the island as well. Um, I've been lucky enough to be coming down here since 1988 it was my first race meeting here and um, I've uh, seen everything, been here for um, a cycling holiday, you can go and see the penguins, there's all sorts of things to do, but we're not here to watch the penguins today are we? Now, what we could see there, though, was the very healthy crowd that's come in here to Phillip Island to uh, take in this first round of the championship. I've said it before, and I think I'll say it again, that uh, because of the last two years and what's happened, it's so much uh, anticipation for a full year of racing this year. And I know that KP's just as excited as we are. She's down on the grid. You betcha I am, Phil. I've got Wayne Maxwell with me from uh, Boost Mobile KTEC Suspension. Um, Wayne, pole position, you're 14th. You're feeling good. The team's together. Everybody's pumped. You're about a second and a half um, ahead of the field. Tell me, what's going through your mind right now? Uh, just keep doing what we've been doing, really. Um, we've worked really hard on improving the bike in some small areas, and the Ducati V4R obviously was sensational yesterday afternoon. So, um, yeah, we'll just, uh, yeah, we've got a pretty good race plan, a pretty good race bike, and, um, yeah, let's see what the race brings. Um, yeah, we're good in warm-up, and, yeah, so far so good this weekend. Well, it's Phillip Island, so anything can happen, right? Yeah, it is Phillip Island. One thing, the weather's perfect. There's a fantastic crowd here, and uh, how good is it? So, yeah, I can't wait to, uh, yeah, hopefully put on a show and see how we go. Oh, yeah, sure, that's what we like. Thanks, Wayne, and good luck. All right, let's have a chat to Crew Halliday from Yamaha Racing Team. I'm going to sneak in front of you right here. Crew, ah, P2. I feel like you're feeling good. You've found some pace. You're the one that can take it to Wayne Maxwell in this race. What are you thinking? Uh, you know, I, I struggled a little bit in warm-up there, but, you know, we tried something new in warm-up and it didn't really work our way, so we've gone back to what we were yesterday. Uh, 
You know, I just need to see how the race pans out. Every time we race here, it's always different. So you can never go really into the into the race with the plan. It's sort of you just take it as it comes. So I'm just going to try watch uh, race evolve and. Now, hopefully Wayne just doesn't just run away with it. Hopefully one of us can just jump onto him. And we've changed tyres as well. How are they feeling? Oh, so much better. You know, it's, I've got so much more confidence in the front. It's just now, now I'm on what everyone else is on, so it's an even playing field. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Great. Fantastic. From Dunlop to Pirelli's, good luck this race. Thank you. Excellent stuff. OK, let's move on over. Ah, a bit of Josh Waters from Maxima Oils Racing BMW. Now, we're all really happy to see you here. It's a bit of a comeback. It's P3 and uh, your smile is so big. Yeah, it's great to be back. So um, I didn't think that I'd be here at the start of the weekend. I, I have an aim to be up the front where I, I think I can be, but um, this race is going to be difficult. I'll try my hardest and that's all I can do. And a few uh, places in front of your teammate as well, right? How, what does he think about that? Oh, it's... It, it's not like that. It, we're a little bit older, so it's, of course you want to beat your teammate and stuff, but let him get going. He's a racer. so yeah, I'm just it, trying to steer you, really. No, no, I just need to worry about myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, You focus on getting to that finish line and getting onto that podium. Thank you. Excellent stuff. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> All right, Brian Starring. Come on over. Come on over with me. Brian Starring. Ah, uh, this is a pretty big day. <laughs> First day back at school, eh? <laughs> yeah. Is that what it feels like? Um, yeah, oh, not really. You know, I'm pretty familiar with this game, I guess. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really happy to be on this motorbike. Um, we're, we're incredibly fortunate to have such great weather today at Phillip Island, and I think this is going to be a very fast race. Exactly. So Desmo Sport Ducati, it's a, it's a new team for you. I mean, old crew, because you know them so well, but has there been a lot to wrap your head around? Well, old crew. I mean, I, I know the I know the face as well. We, we haven't worked together, um, and uh, I couldn't be happier with with our our, our efforts and the, uh, you know the progress we're making. Um, we've got it all to play here for this morning, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting in a rhythm and seeing what I can do. You focus. You get on the job, and we're going to boot. Good luck. Thank you. Head off on the uh, the warm up lap, but there's just so much in this race that uh, we just don't know about because uh, we've got different teams on uh, different tyres to what they were last year. But uh, the other thing is though too that when you have a look back through the field, there's a whole lot of riders that you would think would be fast here at Phillip Island that probably didn't have the best qualifying yesterday, but that was due to the incredibly windy conditions that really affected some people worse than others. Absolutely, and then uh, I guess the most notable is uh, Troy Herfoss. I mean, he's really struggled throughout practice. Um, lots of changes going on in that garage, trying to get that uh, Honda machine sorted. But uh, the good news is in morning warm-up, I think they found something because he found some pace. Unfortunately for him, he starts back down the pack in 16th position on the 6th row. So he's definitely going to be one guy that uh, is going to want to come through the pack. Lachlan Eppes, he's been fast all pre-season too, but uh, had a crash in qualifying. That was looking like he had front row pace, but uh, starts in row three. Arthur Cece's also from row four, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see him leading in the turn one. I mean, there is no one that starts better than him. It's pretty impressive. Daniel Fowles on. We mentioned him before, Phil. Broken leg, but still, row two. Lots to prove from him. He wants to finish this race and finish in a good position. Bo Beaton's back. Yep, great to see Bo Beaton back on uh, board the machine. Bo Beaton was actually in the pitch yesterday doing all the work on the bike himself. And I said, oh, where's your pit crew, Bo? And he goes, oh, I like to do it this way. He said, because uh, I, I like to build my own bikes and everything, and that way I know that everything's been done the way that I want it to be done. So uh, top effort from Bo Beaton to not only be racing, but uh, building the bike and putting it all together as well. He has got a great uh, person to bounce ideas off, though, in Craig McMartin in the garage next door. A couple of young guns there, too. Brock Pearson and Maxi Stauffer. They've uh, joined the fray in Superbikes. Can't wait to see what they've uh, got to do. I'll tell you what, it's going to be hard for them to get on the podium in this class. They may have been on the podium a lot in the 600s, but uh, you're going to have to ride. If you want to beat the top guys here, you have to ride better than perfect. Yeah, that's uh, a couple of pretty talented rookies. We've got also uh, Chandler Cooper joins them in that uh, rookie battle for the uh, the top rookie in 2022. And of course, Wayne Maxwell is the reigning champion. Remember that Glenn Allerton finished second in the championship last year. We've also got this battle within a battle because there are three riders on the grid that have won three Australian Superbike Championships. No one has ever won four ASBK Championships. Well, 
Well, welcome back. Time to get ready for the Alpine Star Superbike class. We are ready to go racing for race number one. Here is your grid. Wayne Maxwell will start from pole position with Crew Halliday and Josh Waters joining him on the front row of the grid. Mike Jones, Brian Starring and Daniel Fowles on round out row two. Row three, Lachlan Eppis, Brock Pearson, the impressive rookie, and Glenn Allerton, the three times champion, round out row three. Row four is Matty Walters, Arthur Cece's and Mark Chiodo. Good job by him. Bo Beaton, Aidan Wagner and uh, the international traveller Ant West round out row five. Troy Herfoss, Jed Metcher and Ben Burke are on row six. Troy Herfoss, row six, not often you see that. It is actually his worst ever qualifying in uh, the ASBK Championship. Expect uh, him to uh, be charging forward through the early part of this race. As you mentioned earlier, Steve, they have found something in warm-up, a pretty talented team, and uh, I think I expect nothing less than Troy Herfoss to put on another impressive performance here at Phillip Island, as he always does, regardless of how the bike is working. Well, ready to go racing. We've had our warm-up laps. All of the pre-season testing and practice here this weekend has been done. Alpine Star Superbike for 2022 is about to get underway. Red flag leaves the front of the grid. We go into the starter's hands. Red lights are on. Superbikes are go for 2022. Great start from Wayne Maxwell. He got a classic launch off the line. And as they make their way down towards turn one for the first time, it is Maxwell that leads and Brian Starring from the second row of the grid. He's up in the second place. Daniel Falzon's also got a cracking start and slots in behind Josh Waters on the Maxima BMW bike number 21. And uh, Josh is in third place, Daniel Falzon in fourth place. But uh, what about that start from Brian Starry from the second row of the grid? That's exactly where he needed to be. He was uh, second quickest in the morning warm-up, only a few tenths slower than the man that leads the race, Wayne Maxwell. So if he can just get in the toe, he might learn a thing or two and try and hold on to the back of Maxwell. It's a big ask, but I'll tell you what, Brian Starry would be pretty happy right now to be where he is. Josh Waters is up there in third position too. I think that was Bo Beaton running wide at turn four, but it looks like Mike Jones has also got a pretty good start. He's up into fifth place on board the bike number 46. The first of the uh, Yamaha uh, ones. Crew Halliday's gone down the field. He started on the front row, but unfortunately for him, he sits uh, back in the just at the edge of the top ten at the moment. Mike Jones up to fourth place now, Steve. He's on a charge early. He's uh, mad Mike. Well, he's all mad and he's ready to go as Wayne Maxwell comes across the top of the hill and down into Pirelli corner. It is the Pirelli shot. The Ducati of uh, Wayne Maxwell that leads from uh, the fellas for the sister machine, another Pirelli shot, Ducati, certainly not from the same team, though. Yeah, well, Maxwell certainly isn't running away with it at the moment. Starring seems to have his pace. It's early days as they head around Yamaha, reach a hard out corner onto that uh, massive uh, straight, uh, hitting speeds of nearly 300 kilometers an hour. So it is Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech ahead of Desmo Sport Ducati. Then it is the Maxima BMW team of Josh Waters in third. Then it's the uh, YRT, the Blue Crew YRT team of Mike Jones. Then it's the second of the Maxima BMWs, Glenn Allerton. He may not have qualified well. He's up to fifth position already, getting the better of Daniel Falzon in the latter half of that lap. We know Glenn Allerton's a racer, that's for sure, and uh, he gets stronger as the race goes on, so keep an eye on him. But these two Ducatis out front just seem to have uh, gaps. Josh Waters just a little bit. Already starting to leave big black lines through uh, turn three as they come down into a Honda corner. Wayne Maxwell, his usual very economical body movement style, not moving around the bike too much. Probably a lot of that is to do with the Avalis that he's been training on and doing a lot of riding on the Avalis. Brian Starring looking pretty comfortable on board the Desmo Sport Ducati considering he hasn't been riding it for that long. And likewise, Josh Waters on that uh, Shane Kinderis prepared uh, Maxima Oils BMW, the new M1000RR that only made its debut in Darwin last year. Look, the thing is that Maxwell, when you look at his bike, it just does not move. It is absolutely uh, perfectly set up. Even the um, Desmo Sport Ducati just in the background, you see a couple of little movements there in the suspension. But uh, nevertheless, up the inside, that's Arthur Cecis who's made a move on uh, Daniel Fowles on. A couple of the South Australians having a good little battle. They look like Crew Halliday was the next one trying to find a way through on uh, Daniel Fowles on. Crew Halliday, of course, on bike number 65. Teammate to uh, Mike Jones started from the front row of the grid. But he's fallen back. He's currently sitting in eighth position just ahead of Matt Walters on the Kawasaki Connection Rover Coaches ZX10, the first of our Kawasaki runners sitting in ninth position. Aiden Wagner just inside the other uh, top ten. Lachlan Eppis, Troy Herpos up to 12th place uh, behind the other uh, BMW uh, 
of uh, Lachlan Eppis. Well, Arthur Seuss is on, a, is on a bit of a mission here. He's just gone past Glenn Allerton as well. So, uh, although in practice he didn't do much, he seems to be making his way forward now. And if you think back to um, Taylor and Ben last year, he was quick. He got taken out. But uh, if he'd have um, stayed on the bike, he would have got a good result. I'll tell you what, he'd be pretty happy to be up there in fifth position at the I reckon moment. he was on track for a podium at uh, Taylor and Ben was uh, Arthur Seuss. It is still Wayne Maxwell, the leader, by 0.914 of a second over Brian Starring. Josh Waters still in third place, but after CC, he's on a charge. Is that Ant West? Just getting it uh, a little bit wrong uh, at the apex of turn four, having to run a bit wide, but uh, gets back on track very, very quickly. And the crew Halliday's now found his way through as well through Glenn Allerton and is glued onto the back of Arthur's machine. Yeah. So um, Arthur has probably got another advantage. We know that he's a great starter, but he's also incredibly light. So his power to weight ratio on that Yamaha is, uh, is getting very good. But also, too, the team's been working to make the bike better as well. Oh, absolutely. They've been doing a lot of work on that bike. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of improvements. Arthur's been riding with that uh, a lot of things. There's Matt Walters in that group, too, who's uh, just staying with that pace at the moment. Back out front, though, that gap's just opened up slightly. 31-7 last time through for Wayne Maxwell. Well, this is uh, Matt Walters' first ASBK race since Darwin last year where he had that massive crash with the brake failure at the end of the uh, the, the long uh, start-finish straight. In the interim, he's got married and uh, done a little bit of uh, pre-season testing as well, getting ready for this first round. Well, it certainly hasn't slowed him down. He's um, set a good pace out there at the moment. 32-1, uh, though, for Brian Starring in second place. No jump starts, no jump starts. So the race is uh, for the win right now. Right, Josh Waters and Mike Jones are having a little bit of a uh, tussle here. Jones tried to put a move on as they got down to turn one, but Waters has got a good run through turn two and just uh, edged the, uh, the Maxima BMW a fraction away from Jones's Yamaha YZF-R1M. They're battling for third place because of our race leader is still Wayne Maxwell. Look at the next group coming through, though. You've got Crew Halliday, who's now ahead of Arthur CCs. So Crew Halliday on board bike number 65. He's got his catch for company on the back of his helmet, and he's on a charge now. Yellow gloves of uh, Crew Halliday really stand out amongst that uh, amongst that group as well. Daniel Fowles and riding incredibly well with that broken leg too, Steve. And uh, Glenn Allerton, the next rider through. Then it's Matt Walters sitting there in the ninth position still. Aiden Wagner up into the top ten as well on the addicted to track machine, bike number 28. You can see the white bike there from uh, Aiden Wagner just sitting right behind Matt, Matt Walters as the green Kawasaki. I do want to keep an eye on Crew Halliday. He's never won a race here at the island, but he is the only man that has been able to run with uh, Wayne Maxwell. If you think back to a couple of years ago, he was the only guy. It was uh, Wayne Maxwell, Crew Halliday, and then Daylight back to the rest of the pack. So uh, he should have the pace. It's a track that he gels well with, with the Yamaha. We can see from Mike Jones that the Yamaha works well here. And boy, what a job he's doing on the number 46 machine on his first ride. Uh, on an inline four for quite some time. Well, and we know how fast the BMW is. Mike Jones's Yamaha just pulled out of the slipstream and blasted on past the BMW M1000RR. So uh, they're certainly uh, not shy in horsepower for uh, Mike Jones's machine. The fact that Mike Jones is also very light probably doesn't uh, assist too much or hurt too much as well. There you go. Look at that on the AMX replay. Jones just pulling out of the slipstream straight down in towards turn one. Have a look at the lap times on that last lap. The two leaders were both in the 32s, then the rest of the field in the 33s, apart from one man, Steve Martin, and you know who that man was? Crew Halliday. Yeah, Crew Halliday on a move forward, um, right behind him, trying to stay in the slipstream after CC's. Let's head down to Kate. Uh, ben Henry from uh, Desmos Port Ducati. You've obviously got your new rider, Brian Starring. Uh, really good start. How's he going out there? Yeah, good. Um, like, we were sort of hoping that um, we'll just see how the first four laps plays out. If he can sort of keep himself in the game there, we think we got strong pace for the last handful of laps. So uh, let's see what we can come up with and uh, give us 20 minutes. Great. Thanks, Ben. Well, Wait, Maxwell, has something has happened. He is falling down the leaderboard, Steve. Yeah, Maxwell's got issues. Maxwell's got issues. Brian Starring is leading the race, and Maxwell is falling back. We do not know what's wrong. We will bring you an update when we find out. But uh, there is uh, no Wayne Maxwell at the front of this uh, pack. He's crashed at turn eight. Turn eight, that's heading up towards the top of Lukey Heights, a pretty fast area of the circuit. Into that's the, a big uh, one. That's the uh, end of the hay shed. You can see all the bits of the bike through there too. He's crashed in the hay shed corner there uh, into Dunlop, uh, lost the front, and uh, you can see he's up and walking, uh, but uh, there's bits of uh, Desmo Sport Ducati everywhere. Not Desmo Sport Ducati. 
Boost Mobile Racing with Katie. You've got it. And unfortunately, it's Craig McMartin's birthday today, so he's going to be spending the uh, the afternoon rebuilding a bike, getting ready for uh, race number two. That leaves Brian Starring in the lead on board bike number 67, the Desmo Sport Ducati. Mike Jones up into second, and Josh Waters on the podium in third place. Crew Halliday is on a charge, and uh, on the last lap was still half a second faster than the riders in front. So uh, keep your eye on Crew Halliday's progress over the next couple of laps. Out the CCs in fifth place on board bike number 61 as well as you can see the debris on the left hand on the right hand side of your screen there in the hay shed gravel trap uh, of uh, Wayne Maxwell's boost mobile racing with K-Tech machine. Yeah, looks like he's just pushed that little bit too hard and lost the front. Looks like we've just had a message from Race Safe that uh, Maxwell is uh, up and about and he's okay. Probably a little bit disappointed in that because uh, he was already pulling away from Brian Starring, but uh, you know, that's racing. You can never count your chickens before they're hatched. And, uh, you know, it's uh, going to be hard for uh, Wayne Maxwell from this point on. Well, Bright Starring comes across to complete six laps of the 12-lap journey. So we're half race distance. Entertaining battle going on here with, uh, looks like Aiden Wagner moving forward uh, as well on bike number 28. He's got ahead of Matt Walters. And uh, Glenn Allison has actually dropped back into that battle as well. So uh, seventh, eighth and ninth position we're looking at there. Pretty talented trio of riders. Always some good results here at uh, Phillip Island. Matt Walters qualified on the front row of the grid here at Phillip Island a few years ago too. So uh, certainly uh, doing very, very well on board that uh, Kawasaki with limited riding experience over the uh, the last uh, seven or eight months. Yeah, well, Aiden Wagner, he's a, a definite uh, winner here as well, isn't he? So um, he knows how to pedal his way around this track. But uh, the new man up front, uh, Brian Starring, they're the guys that, that they're trying to catch at the moment. Mike Jones... Uh, doesn't look like he's catching him, but the fastest man on track last time round was Crew Halliday. Crew Halliday's up into third place now, getting the better of Josh Waters. You can see him there. The yellow boots of uh, Crew Halliday's on a charge. He's got a pretty good target to uh, fix on in front of him. That's his teammate, Mike Jones. And uh, I know they both want to get uh, Yamaha up there, but at the moment they're uh, trying to make sure that they are the top rider in the team as uh, Brian Starring's got a pretty handy lead of about 4.8 seconds over the rest of the field. It is Jones in second, but is that only temporary because his teammate, the man from uh, southwestern Sydney, is really on a charge now, and he's got his eyes fixed on the back of uh, Mike Jones's machine. Time to hand down to the, uh, the pits with KP. I've got Craig McMartin from Wayne's uh, team. You're the team manager here at Boost Mobile, KT, uh, KTEC Suspension. Uh, tell me what, what you saw out there happen at Turn 8. I didn't see anything, to be honest. I was uh, just up on the roof um, trying to just look at the gaps and uh, all of a sudden he didn't come around. So looks like he's probably crashed at the hay shed by the, the dust I could see. So, you know, all I'm worried about is uh, Wayne's OK. You know, we can re rebuild the bike and uh, we'll use a spare bike. So, you know, that's all fine. We'll just, you know, make sure he's good for race two. Oh, nice and relaxed. Thanks so much, Craig. Thank you. And that's all you can do. That's all you can do if you're a team manager. Make sure that he's OK, which we've heard that he is. Um, get that bike ready if they can. If not, he's lucky. He's got a good spare bike there to be able to pull out um, later on today for race two. But he's going to have to make race two count. This is a tricky situation for these guys. You've got uh, Crew Halliday in front now. Mike Jones, what does he do? You do not want to take your teammate out. No, that's uh, certainly right, but uh, they also want to be the first one of those uh, official Yamaha R1Ms home, and Crew Halliday, we said he was on a charge, he had a lot of work to do, he didn't get the best of starts, he started on the front row of the grid, he was back to about ninth position, he's worked his way back through the field, how has that affected his tyres, Steve, because we're on lap eight now of the uh, 12 lap journey, so we've still got one third race distance to go, and uh, Jones, is he able to just sit behind now, because we've heard before that uh, the easiest way to get around this track is if you can follow someone rather than having to uh, push the wind in front. Absolutely. It will be easier for Mike. He can perhaps learn a different line or something from the man in front at the moment. But um, Halliday's been consistently at 32.5 lap after lap after lap, half a second a lap quicker than Mike Jones is able to lap at at the moment. Well, just having a look at the lap times on that last lap, because uh, on the previous lap, Crew Halliday was actually faster than race leader Brian Starring. That's been reverted on that last lap, Starring back into a 32.665, Crew Halliday a 33.0. But he also had to overtake his teammate on that last lap as well. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of lap time 
that uh, Crew Halliday can do now. He doesn't have the advantage of having that target in front of him. And Jones on that last lap was a 33.497. Josh Waters has slipped back to a 33.794. And Arthur in uh, fifth place, 34. The only rider back past that that was doing 33s was Daniel Fowles on in sixth position. And uh, Lachlan Eppes on bike number 83 has stopped at turn two with some sort of technical issue. Yeah, it's a problem for Lachlan there. Let's hope they can get that sorted next time out. And uh, meanwhile, back out front, it is the two Yamaha boys, Mike Jones, just lining up, uh, you know, having a look up the inside, the outside, thinking about where he can pass. If he can stay with him, he'd be assured he'll have a go at the last lap. But in the garage afterwards up there, they probably, if they were friends to start off with, I don't know if they will be at the end. There's Lachlan Eppes yeah. uh, putting, pushing his bike away. Just had word coming through that it was a front-end lose on the exit of yeah. Suzuki Corner, the, uh, the hay shed for Wayne Maxwell. And, uh, well, hopefully uh, the bike's uh, repairable. But with, by the state of the debris field there, uh, Steve, I think uh, Craig and uh, Adrian and the boys, uh, Greg, that might have a little bit of work to do to try and get that one. They might be concentrating on getting the second bike prepared for the race this afternoon. Yeah, Look so at the slipstream use of uh, Mike Jones there. Just can't quite get past crew as they sit up and tip it into uh, turn one at, what, 240, 250 kilometres an hour at the apex of turn one? Yeah, it is quite quick. Uh, that time through, crew halidated 303 kilometres an hour. Uh, so that is... Uh, That's pushing quick. the wind too. That certainly is. Jones, who was in his slipstream, was only 298, so five kilometres well, an hour faster. Jones didn't get a great drive off the final curve there, off the Yamaha Revs Sport um, corner. He had a bit of a bobble, and that will... Uh, slow you down. You need to be perfect with this track to get uh, the right speed. Good uh, battle here between uh, the uh, 727 Moto teammates, uh, Jed Metcher and uh, Brock Pierce, and they've also got young hard charger Mark Chiodo in there as well. And yeah. uh, Mark Chiodo doing a uh, pretty good job uh, on that Yamaha, trying to uh, rebuild his uh, team after a bit of a difficult year last year. But uh, he's got some good people around him doing a good job. Glenn Richards helping him out as well. So it's uh, it's good to see uh, Mark making forward progress. Brock Pearson in that group too. Good to see him, um, you know, learning from those sort of guys. This is his first uh, Australian Superbike Championship race on a superbike. So really impressed to see him up there right with uh, Jed Metcher as well. So, uh, you know, he'll be able to learn a thing or two. Matt Stauff is there as well. Luke Johnson is um, up there too. He's uh, doing an impressive job. The, the youngest guy in the field, Cooper Chandler as well as um, still out there and circulating around uh, and looks like he may have done a personal best time in the race so uh, a good job by Cooper Chandler yeah good to see Maxi Stouffer uh, on bike number uh, 27 step up to the other uh, superbike class this year with good team behind him as well his dad Jamie knows a thing or two about superbikes as we look at this battle between the Yamahas they are trying to be the first Yamaha rider to win the championship since Jamie Stouffer won it in 2006 and 2007 and you can see by the bike attitude they desperately want to be that man yeah. Yeah, 15 years it's been, Phil, as you said. And uh, I tell you, Mike Jones is starting to look a little bit stronger again now. It is easier to sit on the back of the bike. You can just, uh, you know, behind the guy in front, you can just conserve a little bit of energy, use the slipstream to catch up a little bit, take a few more breaths. You judge your braking off the guy in front. So, uh, And we know that Cruz had to push hard uh, to get to where he is because he fluffed the start. We'll be interested to see what he says about that. But... Um, Mike Jones, uh, you know, as the races go on, we know that fitness comes into it, uh, and it's starting to wind down now. So Jonesy, he's going to have a dig, I reckon. Just an update on Troy Herfoss. He's up to 11th place on board bike number uh, 17. Remember, he's still coming back from the injury. They've changed a few uh, technical aspects on that bike. They're still trying to get their handle on it, but uh, Troy Herfoss doing a good job, just gathering up points. He wasn't, uh, as he said, he's not going to win the championship this weekend. He just needed to get through, get some solid points, and that's exactly what he's doing. Speaking of solid points, this man here is on track for a solid haul of points in Alpine Star Superbike race number one. As he starts the final lap now, Brian Starring on board bike number 67, the Desmos Sport Ducati. It will be Brian Starring's first win in the Superbike class since he won uh, all three races at the Bend Motorsport. Park a couple of years ago on board that BC Performance Kawasaki when he had the Dunlop tyres that were clearly the superior tyre for that weekend. And here we go, the battle royal is on now. What's Mike Jones got? He's got to try it in the Honda corner if he can. They come out through the AMMF corner, down the Bass Strait, and through your Yamaha Financial Services. He's got to try and set it up here if he can, but he can't. Crew Halliday's quick through there. Jones is too far back. He goes to the outside. He's got a better idea, I think, on where he can do it. This is Brian Starring's race to lose now, Phil. 
Well, as they make their way out of uh, turn four, Honda Corner, we're into the second half of this uh, last lap of the first race of the 2022 season. Brian Starring has got a 5.6 second lead. He is off setting sail, hoping to secure his 10th victory in the ASBK class. But the battle at the moment is really this one for the podium between Crew Halliday and Mike Jones. We've seen Crew have some great speed, but Jones is closing right in now for the run to the line. And who is going to try and move down in towards turn 10? No, it's Pirelli Corner is uh, a no overtaking zone for Jones. Two corners to go now. He's going to try and get the run to the line. Crew Halliday's going to have to try and outsmart his teammate here. But it is Brian Starring through turn 12 for the final time. He's setting sail for the line now, Steve. This will be 10 ASBK victories for Brian Starring. His first race on board the Desmos Sport Ducati. And he takes the win on board bike number 67. The battle for the rest of the podium. Looks like Crew Halliday is going to get the drive to the line. That that must have been a sensational run through turn 12 for Crew Halliday. He actually pulled out distance on his teammate Mike Jones. And the two Yamahas round out the podium in second and third position. Josh Waters will be coming to the line now to take fourth place as well. And Matt Walters, a pretty good charge for him as well. And he should finish inside the top ten as we come across the line now. It is uh, Glenn Allerton made his way back up to sixth place. Just behind Daniel Falzen in fifth as the rest of the field comes across the line. And Ant West makes his way up into the top 10 on board bike number 13. They were lost for all sorts uh, earlier on in the weekend. Ant West was uh, disappointed that he wasn't going to be able to put on a show. He's got all the way up to 10th position with a uh, good charge in the second half of that race. Yeah, super impressive stuff for all of those guys. Brian Starring, what a ride. Do you think he's going to shed a tear or two? I think he will. Well, congratulations to Brian, Ben, and uh, all of the team there at uh, Desmo Sport Ducati. What a victory by 5.498 seconds over Crew Halliday. First race win for the team, uh, Brian Starring, in your first race. You can't start with the team better than that. Mike Jones that rounds out the podium behind his teammate, Crew Halliday. Josh Waters just off the podium in his first run for the Maxima BMW team in fourth. Daniel Falzen in fifth. Glenn Allerton in sixth. Wagner in seventh. Cece's in eighth. Matt Walters in ninth. And Ant West rounding out the top ten. Yeah, beautiful stuff. Troy Herfos, big improvement for him. He was in the 33s for the first time in the weekend in that race. That'll give him confidence. Jet Metcher with the 727 Motorsport team in uh, 12. Mark Chiodo, solid result in 13th. 14th is Brock Pearson. And Bo Beaton rounds out the points in 15th. Uh, welcome back to the championship. And there's those tiers. I was telling you about. How happy is Brian Starring? Yeah, you can see Ben Henry and uh, Dan Stofer, another man that's won races on a Yamaha Superbike in uh, ASBK, there with him to, uh, to celebrate the, uh, the victory. But uh, yeah, you predicted it, Steve, that there would be tears, and uh, I think you can see how much that means to, uh, to Brian Starring. <laughs> It's just so good to see, isn't it? I saw him this morning with some new cheek pads for his, uh, his new Arrow helmet. He's going to need to get some more. Those ones will be saturated by the end of this race. Well, I reckon you might be right there. But, uh, you know, it's been a tough few years for this man. Um, he's had a tough career uh, racing in Europe, nearly winning the Super Sport Championship over there. Uh, raced in MotoGP, didn't have a competitive bike when he did that. Uh, came back, uh, joined the Kawasaki team. Uh, struggled there, couldn't quite get the bike to handle the way he wanted to. Uh, it all seems to have gelled. It's come together. He's trained his, his butt off. He's really put in for it, and it's uh, a deserved win for this man. Because is that an excitement or just a sigh of relief, I think, uh, after, the, uh, after that race? But congratulations to Brian. And uh, he always knew he had the talent to win another race. And uh, there he is. He secured race win number 10 in the ASBK class. So congratulations to Brian in his 81st ASBK start. Well, he can add that. Uh, he'll remember it well. 81st with a win. That's pretty impressive. Remembering he won the championship um, quite a few years ago now. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, he's looking pretty strong at the moment. And that win is just going to make things better for him. Let's take, go down to the AMX podium with KP. All right, we're at the Alpine Star Superbike Race 1 podium and in exciting news, Mike Jones in your campaign for a Yamaha Racing Team P3. Congratulations, that was an epic battle with your teammate just at the end there. Yeah, look, it was a really good race. I mean, 
for the opening race for me with the Yamaha Racing Team. I'm uh, quite excited about that one, to be honest with you. Um, I made a reasonable start, got a little bit boxed in there, um, and uh, and so I was a few spots behind. But you know, had really good pace early on. Was able to um, pick through those riders, get myself up there, and um, and then obviously Crew had a, a little bit more pace towards the end there, and I just couldn't quite get past him. So a strong race, but I'm very happy. Excellent stuff. Great start to the year, my friend. And in P2, Crew Halliday from Yamaha Racing Team. Crew, that was an interesting start there, but you made up some good time. Man, I, I need to sort my, my starts out, eh? They're horrible. I've never met anyone that goes from the first row to, like, the third row by the first corner, but, you know, I, I, I sort of... I was starting to panic, and then I thought, no, nah, you can't. It's, like, it's 12 laps. It's a fair way around here to fill the pond, so... Um, you know, I started to get passed by other people. I was like, all right, this is, I started to panic. And then once I got my move on, that's when it all started to click. You know, I seen Josh and Mike, and I knew that gap was going to be kind of hard to close. But, you know, I found myself really fast in the sector three. So I, uh, the gap kept getting like, closer and closer and faster than what I thought. So I was like, yeah, I'm on for a shot here for podium. Then I seen Wayne crash, which sucks. But, you know, I wish I was up with Brian to try to capitalise on, on uh, Wayne's mistake. But it's, it's racing how it is. Exactly, but there's another race to go today, so you go and relax and enjoy this uh, P2. Yeah, I just need to sort that start time out, but thank you. Excellent stuff. Well done, crew. And in P1 from Desmo Sports, you caddy. The one from WA. The one that we just saw some tears from, Brian Starring. That must have felt so good. Oh, yeah, I... Um... <laughs> uh... <laughs> I've, been, I've been pretty patient for a long time. And uh, anyway, I've got to get it together because I've got to race again this afternoon. But uh, <laughs> it's been a lot of sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, big thanks to the team. Uh, geez, they gave me an incredible motorbike, and I, we we were chasing all weekend, and. I knew that we had a good race pace. I didn't know how good it needed to be, though. And um, once we set out, I could really see the areas where we were struggling and a few areas where we were strong. Um, and in the end, I kept the pressure on. I didn't do any more than that, but uh, we were rewarded with a race win today. So um, I certainly hope Wayne's OK. It's never, never fun sliding along your backside. But um, anyway, I couldn't be happier. Thanks so much to Ducati V4R. Um, Panigale and my team. Quite an unbelievable uh, race, really. Wayne Maxwell, I mean, anything can really happen at Phillip Island, and you saw it there today. Thank you. Uh, look forward to this afternoon. Thank Great. you. Thanks so much, Brian. Well done. Congratulations. Everybody's pretty stoked with the fact that Brian Starring took out that win. Really exciting stuff from Desmo Sport Ducati. P2 for Crew Halliday and Mike Jones, his teammate in P3. Well done, boys. Let's have a look at the Honda highlights now of the race. And weren't there some, Steve Martin, as we got away, it was Wayne Maxwell that uh, jumped off the line and led the field through turns one and two. But Brian Starring, as he said, was there putting the pressure on. We saw some big charges from some riders as they made their way through. Glenn Allison, Arthur Cece's, was making his way through. We saw Air West run wide there, and we thought that may have been the end of his race. It wasn't to be. No, Crew Halliday, though, didn't get a very good start, so he had to make his way forward. Mike Jones was on a mission on his first ride on the MR. The green flag out. Out, all OK, but not OK for Wayne Maxwell because he ended up biting the dust. Glenn Allison was having a great battle with Aidan Wagner and uh, Matt Walters as they made their way down the garden straight in towards Turn 1. That battle went pretty much all the way to the flag, as did Crew Halliday's charge. He came from a long way back. He, by his own admission, he didn't get the best of starts. He was in ninth position, but by but only a few laps to go, he got past his teammate and then set sail for another podium, which would be his 21st podium in the ASBK class. But this man took his 10th win. Brian Starry, you can saw how emotional he was on the podium. It meant a lot to him and it meant a lot to the team and uh, Brian Starring takes his first win in his first race for Desmo Sport Ducati. You can't get a first round, first race better than that. Plenty more action coming up here from Phillip Island. Dunlop Super Sport 300 up next, but first a short break. paradigm shift to achieve a totally new mission.
At this very moment, the rider is protected, but it only takes 0.03 seconds for the sneaker to burst, 0.6 seconds for the jeans to disintegrate. Then, like a human crown, his flesh is shredded by the coarse bitumen. feeling like it. The howl of the wind in your ears. Feeling every vibration. Every inch of the tarmac. Just right. the 2022 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship and with me is Wayne Maxwell. Wayne, what went down at Turn 8? Oh, me, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, look, it's um, just yeah, it's just one of those weird ones. I don't know if I was pushing a little bit too hard or whatever. I was still riding uh, reasonably conservative. So, um, yeah, it was a bit unfortunate. I feel really bad for the team because, um, you know, we just threw away a potential victory. So, um, look, yeah, we'll move to the other bike um, and, uh, yeah, get set to uh, come out this afternoon and try to redeem what we've uh, done there and try to get out of here on a positive. And you're all OK physically? Yeah, all OK. Yeah, a bit of a sore finger and stuff. But, um, yeah, look, we'll, uh, we'll press on and, um, yeah, we will worry about that. We've only got 12 more laps and then the day's over. So I'm pretty keen to get into it. Come back hungrier. Yeah, no, all good. Just nice and sensible. All good. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Oh, great to hear from Wayne Maxwell there. And uh, good news is uh, he's only uh, got a bit of a sore finger. I'm sure he'll be able to overcome that. Getting ready for the Dunlop Supersport 300 race number two. Glenn Nelson, James Jacobs and Henry Snell. We've already seen them uh, in action today, but they'll start out of the first row too. Cameron Dunk, uh, Liam Walters and Barris Fleming in row two. Brett Bodie Gower. Josie Marinello and Jay Russo, row three. Yeah, Jay Marinello having his last ride in Australia before he heads off to uh, America for the uh, Moto America Championships. Teo Aksu, Mitchell Simpson and uh, JJ Narlos in uh, row four. Sam Pizzetta, Laura Brown and Brendan Demery on row five. And Hayden Nelson, Peter Nerlich and Clay Clegg on row six. Yeah, really going to be a good one, Phil. Can't wait to get these guys uh, underway. Lincoln Knight, Jamie Port, Jack Favell, Jake Senior, Cooper Roundtree and Jordan Simpson rounds out row eight with uh, Jaden Martin in row nine. Yeah, I think Jamie Port might be out of this one with a broken collarbone yesterday, but uh, ready to go racing. Dunlop Supersport 300 in the starters' hands. Supersport 300 is go. Great start from Nelson from the front row of the grid there. You can see him now position himself for the long run down the straight. He got off the line well, but is he going to get caught in the slipstream by the rest of this field as they make their way down to turn one? No, I think he will still lead as we make our way through turn one for the first time. But look at this pack charging behind him. A few creative lines out there, very wide as they make their way down there. But bike number 16, it is the, uh, the Kawasaki Ninja 400 that leads them through turn two as they make their way out of there and on the line. Long run down Bass Strait. Yeah, good start by James Jacobs there. Cameron Dunkner just behind him as well, so really good to see. Glenn Nelson, uh, who got that great uh, start in second position. And uh, Tao Atsu, who won the R3 Cup earlier today. Good job by him. He's up there, uh, buoyed with confidence at the moment. Down into uh, Honda Corner, turn four we go. Our top three have just got a couple of bike length lead over the uh, pursuing pack behind. A few riders using up all of the track there and uh, just out onto the slipstream. But uh, just looking to see where some of those riders are back in the pack. Varus Fleming, who was so fast this morning, is back in seventh position, Steve. So uh, that's a bit of a strange one. And Liam Waters, who was also very fast this morning, is, uh, is further back in the pack in eighth. So keep your eye on those riders as they try to uh, make their way through. Also, uh, JJ, Jonathan Narlis was uh, putting in good performance this morning. He's back in fifth. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there is quite a gap there. Those first three guys have got like three or four bike lengths already over Henry Snell in fourth position. So they've got a cracker of a start. Be interesting to see how that tightens up as they head down the straight. Um, it should tighten up a little bit, but uh, if you're going to make a break, it's always good to do it on the first lap here at Phillip Island, in this class especially. So Nelson leads them back out onto the other uh, straight. The one thing that we know is that he probably won't be leading by the time they get towards turn one, although there's been a 
bit of a change there. He's gone right to the right-hand side of the, uh, the circuit, but he still managed to... Uh, didn't even give them the slipstream advantage, but uh, Jacobs and uh, Teo Apsu have managed to uh, get ahead, and they will be Jacobs that leads them through turn one now on the start of this uh, second lap through the, uh, the motor corner. Henry Snell's done a great job. He's just managed to get into that slipstream and board himself up to that leading pack. Um, the peloton behind them, let's say. It's going to be uh, interesting to see. A little bit wide there. Yeah, Jacob's got it all wrong in turn two and was lucky to actually only lose a position momentarily for Teo Aksu. As uh, Aksu then ran a fraction wide as well, but Snell's been the big... Uh, the winner there, but he's been on the podium once today, so he's coming into this race with a fair amount of confidence. Look at that gap's been maintained too, hasn't it, Steve? Over the pursuing pack. So now it's our top four that have got away. I think that might be uh, Nalos that's now made his way up into uh, the uh, the head of that uh, pursuing pack. Oh, there's a bit of a finger there being shown from uh, Glenn Nelson. Yeah, I'm not sure what he was doing then. Could he have been reaching for a tear off, maybe? Maybe he's got something on his visor that didn't quite see. I mean... There's no good trying ahead. to give um, James Jacobs the bird because he was ahead of him. He wouldn't have been able to see it. Yeah, not in the middle of the corner, that's for sure. But uh, meanwhile, there is quite a gap there as the group behind jostled position. Perhaps there's somebody that can catch this group in front, but they're still trying to get through to the front of the group behind. So it is James Jacobs on board bot number 16 that leads from Glenn Nelson. 12, uh, 12. Right at number 12 is uh, Henry Snell in third place. Tayu Aksu on the 91 machine is in fourth. Cameron Dunker has made his way up into fifth position. As we said before, he's been training the house down with uh, Maxi Stouffer in the off-season as uh, Max gets ready to make his uh, Superbike debut, or was getting ready to make his Superbike debut here this weekend. Uh, Jonathan Narlos in sixth. Brody Gore within seventh. Brandon Demery, the man who was supposed to be retiring at the end of last year, but he's here for one last hit out. This is the, um, the final race for Brandon Demery, apparently. He might not do a Johnny Farnham and come back another three or four times. He's in eighth, and Jay Russo in ninth, and Hayden Nelson on board bike number 279 rounds out the top ten. So good effort there from the young 14-year-old. Yeah, very good job by Hayden Nelson to be uh, riding with these guys up there. Barris Fleming just in front of him, so that's a pretty decent group to be dicing around with. But back up front, it's a real good ride there by Henry Snell, who's come from that fourth spot earlier in the race to lead at the moment. He's shown some really good pace. These little 300s are pretty quick down the straight too, Phil. 189 kilometres an hour for Henry Snell last time through the shoot. Well, actually, just looking at one of them, uh, Varus Fleming actually cracked 200 k's an hour on the uh, on the last run down the straight, so uh, excellent job there by uh, Varus Fleming on his uh, Yamaha R3. It is the Kawasaki Ninja 400 of uh, James Jacobs that leads them at the moment as they slip their way through uh, Ducati Corner. Down at uh, Siberia there, the bottom end of the circuit. Big thanks to Dunlop who support this class and make it possible. Without them, we couldn't do it. So really good to see um, all of the manufacturers being involved with different classes and naming right sponsors. There are a fair few different brands of tyre uh, at use in this class as well this weekend too, Steve. So uh, Dunlop, I think Michelin have got a couple of riders out there as well as uh, Pirelli and maybe even a couple of Bridgestones as well. So... Uh, a good four-way battle in the, uh, the Super Sport class as we make our way through Michelin Corner now and out through Turn 11 and into Turn 12. This is a very, very fast part of the circuit, even on one of these uh, Super Sport 300 machines through Yamaha revs your heart corner, and they'd be revving those bikes now, trying to get the maximum out of them as they make their way onto the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance start-finish straight. You can see some creative lines there once again, but it is Jacobs that goes to the outside and uh, will lead them down towards turn one, but here come the uh, hordes of R3s R3 behind. Teo Aksu just trying to find a way through, can't do it, and Henry Snell went for the inside, but uh, couldn't, once he pulled out of the slipstream, just lost all his forward drive. Yeah, absolutely. These guys now are really starting to get serious. You can just see the variance in lines there. Um, looks like Teo Aksu's running wide up the top, but uses all the track, but it's a good line. He's got some good corner speed, has the number 91. Uh, I saw it earlier on. He, he rounded up through turn 12 as well. Uh, a good move there, but uh, some real good corner speed, and that's what you need to carry on these uh, 300s to get some good lap times. Through turn four, Honda corner we go. And James is... Jacob leads the way again. Good result by him. And the good thing for him is he always seems to be able to get to the front when he needs to. So, um, you know, that can bode well for later on in the race. We've got uh, roughly three laps to go after this one. So it's going to be interesting to see 
um, if anyone can break away. It almost looks like uh, James Jacob is starting to stretch it out a little bit, Phil. Well, there was only very few um, hundreds of a second between Glenn Nelson, James Jacobs and Henry Snell in their qualifying times. So no surprise to see them at the, uh, the front of the field. But uh, when you have a look at it, uh, Teo Aksu was... Uh, about one second or so further behind. So they've found something in that machine for Teo to be taking part in this four-way battle now for our top uh, Look at him there. three positions. Did you see the, the extra speed that he carries just through the middle of that corner? Watch him here. He goes out wide. He's gone round the outside of both of them. He had to go round the outside because they were holding him up quite, uh, quite clearly there and goes into the lead. He's un unfortunately going to give them the slipstream now as Henry Snell seems to be playing that incredibly well. That's exactly what he did in the, uh, the R3 Cup race earlier on today, wasn't it, Steve? He used that slipstream onto the straight to absolute perfection to take a podium position. It uh, is Tay Aksu who just may manages to maintain that lead at the moment, though. With Glenn Nelson up the inside. Big wide lines by Tay Aksu. I think this is our podium from the R3 Cup this morning, just with the addition of James Jacobs on the, uh, the Kawasaki thrown into the, uh, the mix. Unfortunately, uh, bike number five, Jake Senior, has crashed at turn 11. Good news is, Steve, that the rider is up and uh, walking away. Just having a look back behind this uh, group of riders, uh, Brody Gore with his matey boy up into uh, fifth position on board bike number 25, and young South Australian Sam Pezzetta is up into uh, sixth place ahead of uh, Cameron Dunker, Joe Russo, Brandon Fleming, uh, Brandon Demery, and Varus Fleming, who round out the top ten. As we look at the AMX Superstores replay there, and I think that that was uh, the crash of uh, Jake Senior. Yeah, that's Jake Senior that's gone down there and, um, yeah, just asked too much of the tyres, and... Uh, Looks like he just lost the rear, came round on him uh, on the edge of the tyre and all over. So Laura Brown back in uh, 15th position as well, just behind uh, Mitch Simpson on 66 and ahead of Hayden Nelson on 279. So I always like to uh, update everyone with uh, Laura Brown. She's got a lot of fans, Steve, so we always like to uh, keep fans updated of uh, Laura Brown's position in this race. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Laura Brown held the lap record here for a, correct. a period of time, didn't she? I'm not sure if it was Super Sport 300 or R3 Cup. I think it may have been Super Sport 300. Yeah. But, uh, yes, Laura Brown is a, an extremely fast rider, and it shows you how close this class is and how competitive it is when someone that has previously held the lap record is back in 15th position. Absolutely. I mean, there's just tense between it, isn't it? And but she it's... loves her motorbike racing, does the, uh, the veterinary uh, doctor from, uh, from Sydney. Down into uh, turn one we go. We're on lap six, so uh, we're on the second last lap now, Steve. And it is the uh, the same four riders that are battling in this battle, and they're just pulling out a lead. It's about three point three and a half seconds or so over the rest of the field, which is now uh, being led by Varus Fleming, who's moved his way up into a uh, fifth position. So just looking to see who's in second place in that group. It is Cameron Dunker on board bike number three. Then it's uh, John Nardos, JJ on the uh, the all blue machine. By prepared by uh, Al Samuels in uh, North Sydney. So looking at this lead group now, it is James Jacobs on 16 that is in the lead from Glenn Nelson. And then the next rider through would be uh, Henry Snell. And Teo Aksu is just sitting there keeping his powder dry in fourth position. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, they're at the point now when they pass the line, they get the last lap board. It's going to be interesting to see where they're at. James Jacobs obviously very strong through this part of the circuit. Um... You know, can the guy slipstream him over the start-finish line? This will be a bit of a dry test for Glenn Nelson and Henry Snell to see what he can do. Now, there's a couple of geese there on the oh. edge of the circuit. Who's that uh, come off there at uh, is that Honda corner turn four? Nelson down the inside, down the inside of Jacobs. The uh, run to that chequered flag is starting now. We're one and a half, well, one lap and three corners from the end, Steve. But uh, this is where they're going to start setting it up. And Glenn Nelson thinks that uh, he needs to get to the lead as we come round through turn 12. The thing is that this will put him back in about third or fourth position as we get to turn one. That's Maybe right. that's part of his plan. Well, let's just keep an eye on um, um, uh, Taylor Aksu here and see where he ends up. In fourth, he would end up taking the podium there. Maybe, third, maybe even second. So he needs to be, I reckon you need to be about second or third in that group on that final um, Yamaha corner. Did you notice then too, Teo actually, actually put his legs out wider, maybe to slow himself down because he didn't want to actually have to go past without backing off the throttle. Just a little bit less aerodynamic efficiency held him back, so he's sitting in that position where he thinks he needs to be coming into the second half of this last lap. But we have got less than 4.45 kilometres to go. It is James Jacobs that leads from Henry Snell, Glenn Nelson and Teo Aksu. 
So we've got one Kawasaki and three Yamaha R3s that are battling it out for the first race victory of today for the Yamaha, sorry, the Dunlop Supersport 300 class. And it is James Jacobs that still leads as we make our way out of uh, turn four Honda corner and down towards Ducati at turn five and six. Through Ducati they go. James Jacobs on the Kawasaki lead. He's done a lot of leading there. You can just see them getting down underneath the screen now, trying to eke out every little bit of slipstream they can. But uh, a little bit of a gap there by James Jacobs. He does seem to pull a bit of a gap just out there and through the Hayshed corner, the Dunlop corner. But uh, they boys do close it up over the top of um, Lukey Heights here, the Alpine Stars corner and into Pirelli. And the man that's got all the corner speed through turns 10 and 11, or sorry, 11 and 12, is Tayu Aksu, who is at the back of this group now. That gap has disappeared, and now James Jacobs has got Glenn Nelson all over the back of him. And Henry Snell, the man that took the victory in yesterday's first race of the season, is well positioned there in third. Come around the final corner for the final time. It is Nelson who goes around the outside. Snell puts in, pulls into his slipstream, and Tayu Aksu tucks in behind them as Henry well. Henry Snell, keep an eye on Snell. Snell goes to the lead. James Jacobs in second. Can Snell hold to the line? He does. That's two from two. James Jacobs takes his first podium of the year as well. And I just can't see who got into third. Was it Nelson Aksu. or Tayo Aksu? It was, it was Tayo Aksu. Got on the podium by, well, let's just call it thousands of a second. Not much. It was very, very close. So congratulations to Henry Snell, who took his second race victory for the Dunlop Supersport 300 class. Two victories from two races, and Henry Snell starts his 2022 championship off with a bang. That was a pretty, uh, pretty fun race if you're in that top four. The guys behind were able to run uh, the group with Joe Marinello, Hayden Nelson in there too. They were all in the 49s, but it took them a while to, to, to work up to that. So that was a bit of an issue for them. They lost the gap straight up. And Hayden Nelson, who finished in 10th place, Steve, did his fastest lap of the race on the last lap. So uh, they've got the setup of that bike working well, if you can do that. A 149.760, but no one could outsmart Henry Snell. Took his second race victory for the weekend by 0 0.064 of a second over James Jacobs. And Tayu Aksu rounds out the podium 0 .0, oh sorry, 0.146 behind our race leader. Glenn Nelson in fourth. Sam Pazetta, the young South Australian, in fifth. Cameron Dunker on bike number three in sixth. Johnny uh, Nalus, uh, JJ on uh, bike number 20 in seventh. Brody Gore within eighth. Jay Russo in ninth. And Hayden Nelson rounds out that top ten. Joseph Marinello in 11th, uh, heading over to the States very shortly. Brandon Demery on his uh, retirement weekend, so he says. Liam Waters in 13th. The 14th was Mitch Simpson from South Australia. Laura Brown got the final point, the ex- uh, record holder here at the circuit so good to see but look how happy these boys are they are super pumped to be on the podium here today well henry snell's pumped because he's just taken his second victory so i think so far is this weekend he's been on the podium at least three times in uh, in four races it's a fantastic result for uh, for henry good to see the james jacobs getting a, a strong result as well <laughs> yeah it's a good feeling to hold that finger up the number one really good ride by him and also, tell you, actually, how much has he improved since last year, where he, you know, a couple of times he knocked on the door of the podium, but, but to be consistently in there and at the podium is a fantastic effort. Also, a big shout-out to uh, Joe Marinello, who would have to be probably one of the heaviest riders in this field, yeah. um, having his last ride here this weekend before he heads over to uh, compete in the Moto America Championship uh, that starts, I think it's in about another uh, Not four or five away. weeks or Not so. so. Best of luck uh, in 2022, Joe, and hopefully we'll see you back here for the final round at the Bend Motorsport Park in, um, I think it's early December, Steve. Yeah, for Teo Aksu, I mean, it's, uh, you know, once you start getting those podiums, that just gives you another little bit of a boost. So, you know, for him, it's good. Look at that crowd, mate. They're all having a good time. The Santa Cruz, rocking the Santa Cruz hat there. Nice, uh, is that a VTR in the background there? Yeah, the VTR SP1. It is an SP1. They've uh, done plenty of laps around this track and a lot of winning, those machines. Well, time for our AMX Superstores podium, down to KP. Yes, for the Dunlop Supersport 300, congratulations in P3, Teo Aksu. This is your second P3, things are off to a good start. Yeah, it feels awesome, it came all the way down to the last lap. Yeah, all credit to the boys, that was an awesome race. Yeah, I'd just like to thank Rikondi Racing Road, Triple M Motorcycles, Triple X Rated Suspension, Team Moto Narang Yamaha and RI Helmets. Excellent stuff. Well done, Tao. And in P2, 
James Jacobs from Mega Cycle Racing. James, wow, what a race. Yeah, it was such a good race. I was just trying as hard as I could the whole time, and the boys weren't giving up. It was just a good race. Such good stuff. Well done. Congratulations. A good start to the year. Yeah, thank you. I'd just like to thank our mum and dad, my sister as well, Carl and Maddie Waters from Kawasaki Connection, Rakondi from Road and Race, EK Chains, Lucas Oils. Thank you. Good work, James. And in P1, the second win for you, Mr. Snell, Henry Snell. Congratulations from Mega Cycle Racing. That was really tight. Yeah, it was a great race. Great competition from the boys again. Just got P1 on the line. But yeah, overall, great race. Uh, I'd just like to thank Dad for bringing me off from Queensland, Mega Cycle Race Team, Tim for always being a legend, and all the boys for the competition. On your Dad. Well done. Congratulations, Henry. Thank you. They're loving it, this well, thanks very much, KP. Congratulations to Henry Snell, James Jacobs and Tayu Aksu, our podium in the Dunlop Supersport 300 class. And uh, Henry Snell now, now leads the championship, uh, Steve Martin, on a perfect score of 50 points. Uh, 12 points ahead of Glenn Nelson and Tayu Aksu in third. Cameron Dunker up into fourth as well. So uh, we're off to a pretty good start to the Dunlop Supersport 300 championship. And as we've seen in years gone by, you win this championship, then you move up into the Supersport class, and like uh, Max Stofa and those guys, you end up in, in Superbikes. Well, we're ready to close the other live stream now. But remember, live TV on SBS and also Stan Sport starts from 1 o'clock. And the Alpine Stars Superbike and all the other support classes will be in that package. So the live stream will continue after that uh, package finishes off with the last couple of races for today. But until... We come back later on this afternoon. Join us on live TV from 1 o'clock on both SBS and Stan Sport.